Hi guys, welcome back. This is Matt Chat episode 465, featuring a look at the game Buck Rogers Countdown to Doomsday. Now this is a game in the gold box style, but instead of being set in a fantasy setting, uh, a la Dragonlance or the Forgotten Realms, it's set in the Buck Rogers in the 25th century universe, which is quite a bit different. And they made some interesting uh, changes to the engine in order to accommodate that setting and uh, uh, campaign uh, rules or uh, uh, role-playing system. Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, basically what it comes down to is a sci-fi uh, aesthetic, uh, some new skills, and a ship-to-ship uh, -ship combat mode, uh, and a lot of other uh, bells and whistles that make it special and really distinctive from that uh, mainline uh, Forgotten Realms gold box game. So if you like the gold box games that are kind of uh, bored with it or you're just looking for a little something uh, different, uh, I think you'd really uh, should check out Buck Rogers. And if you uh, like science fiction <laughs> uh, and just want something with a good storyline to it, uh, I think you'll also be pleased. Anyway, we've got a lot to cover here, so without further ado, here is Buck Rogers' Countdown to Doomsday. All right, folks, let's get this party started. We're going to take a, a dive into this game, Buck Rogers' Countdown to Doomsday. This is an SSI gold box game. They did have to make some changes, some adaptations, basically, to... Uh, make it fit a sci-fi setting. It's got some pretty interesting uh, things we'll get into here, like a skill system, uh, different professions, different uh, uh, weapons. So it, there's, there's quite a bit to distinguish it from something like Pool of Radiance or, you know, any of those other gold box games. Uh, there's also quite a bit of history. I wish I had, uh, <clears throat> you know, more time <laughs> to get into this. I kind of went down a rabbit hole trying to find out more about Buck Rogers. I mean, I remember Buck Rogers from, from a show that was, uh, yeah, out in the late 70s, early 80s. You know, I, I'd almost forgotten this, but I went back and watched the trailer. <laughs> uh, you can actually watch the episodes for free. A uh, bunch of commercials, annoying as hell, but uh, you can watch this for free on NBC. Uh, and it really brought back some uh, some sort of half-forgotten memories uh you know, if you go back and watch this, it's, it's kind of like if you, it's, it's like so 70s, it's painful. You know, so if you sort of ripped off uh, Star Wars and sort of made it somehow cheesier, <laughs> like, you know, disco bots and things, uh, you know, you could try to make it through this show. Uh, but it had, a, I think, a movie as well. You know, I really want to go back and watch this movie. I didn't even know, you know, I completely just spaced out on this, but there was a movie in 79. And it's got the, I think the same guy, yeah, Gil uh, Gerard, I think, uh, that's in the TV show. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to probably this weekend at some point watch this movie uh, just to see what I missed out on. But I definitely remember this the show. Uh, I like to, yeah, I remember this robot. You know, you might get it confused. Uh, if you just saw random clips from it, you might think this was the old Battlestar of Galactica. Not, not the good one. <laughs> the bad one. <laughs> Uh, and that was uh, the same producer. This uh, Glenn Larson, I guess, did Battlestar Galactica, and then they did Buck Rogers. But obviously, you know, they're everybody's excited about the uh, Star Wars and, of course, Star Trek before that. And they're trying to basically copy that. But this Buck Rogers thing goes back a ways. You know, I didn't realize how early this was, but this was apparently pre-Flash uh, Gordon. I guess it must have been one of the very first uh, comic strips. Uh, sort of sci-fi comic strips. I'll get into why all this is relevant here in a minute, but <laughs> there was a, an earlier show back in the 50s, a black and white thing, uh, kind of one of these super cheesy, uh, you know, Hercules style, the, the sort of thing that MST3K likes to poke fun at. Uh, but anyway, what happened? So TSR, as you know, is a company that put out Dungeons and Dragons. It was a very Gygax and did very, very, very well. Uh, however, by, uh, I think, yeah, the mid-80s or so, there were some issues there. A lot of shenanigans. I can't even begin to get into all the shenanigans <laughs> behind the scenes with, with the money and people getting fired and getting into massive amounts of debt and all this sort of thing. Uh, so Lorraine Dill Williams is uh, brought in to manage the thing. And she has got a... Uh, she later ends up totally in control, but anyway originally brought in to manage it and um she is related or i guess her uh dad maybe 
Uh, anyway, somehow or another, she is tied to the creators of that original uh, Buck Rogers comic strip. Yeah, somewhere here it talks about the... Uh, let's look and see if we can figure out. This is a... Okay, yeah, she's a granddaughter of John F. Dill, who, while president of the National Newspaper Service Syndicate in the 1920s, wow, this is even earlier than I thought, uh, arranged for Buck Rogers to be turned into a syndicated comic strip. And then she, uh, I guess, inherited it ultimately. So her granddad, is he arranged for Buck Rogers? So I guess he didn't create it then. Okay, I'm going to have to <laughs> find this out. Hold on one sec. Okay, so the Buck Rogers rabbit hole continues. <laughs> it goes ever deeper. <laughs> All right, so it was created by someone named Philip Francis Nolan. 1928 and it's in this amazing stories pulp and then it was adapted into a syndicated comic strip in 1929 and it was syndicated by john f dill co and this was again remember the granddad uh, of lorraine who ends up being the president of tsr all right <clears throat> Uh, so anyway, uh, she owns the all the rights to this series, and I guess the idea is let's do something with it here at TSR. I don't know what the folks at TSR must have thought about this, uh, but they made a board game. Let me show you that. Okay, and there's the the board game. I guess this was 1988. Yeah. Seeing if we can get a look at the board. Doesn't look like much from these these photos but anyway after this board game there was also a uh, a full-on role-playing game uh, they made a setting out of it and designed flint and dills getting credit there for that uh, the setting was active from 88 to 95 wow yeah she decided to merge buck rogers and dnd to make the xx5 or i guess 25th century game setting First, a board game came out in 1988, later followed by a role-playing in 1990. Second edition was some, uh, it was based on ad and second edition with some uh, small differences. It was a new incarnation of the Buck Rogers world created by Williams' brother, Flint Dill. Oh, okay, so this is a kind of a family enterprise, I suppose. Uh, so yeah, it'd be, I would, you know, it'd be fun to interview either uh, uh, Flint, maybe, or Lorraine. At some point on, on Match Head, it'd be fun to you know, learn more about this behind-the-scenes stuff. Uh, but anyway, this is the setting that ends up at uh, SSI. And I guess they're tasked with trying to turn this thing into a uh, uh, into a playable computer game. And they're, they're basing their story, of course, on that later Buck Rogers stuff. <clears throat> and it's kind of like if you ever watched that show Andromeda. It's another one that I did watch. It doesn't tend to get a very good, good rep these days. But now you got this sort of hero uh, astronaut back in the 80s, and he uh, gets stuck in a cryostasis sort of deal. And all these, what is it, 500-something years later, uh, is re resurrected, and there's all these... Uh, you know, wars going on, and he's got to liberate, you know, the earth and all this kind of jazz, you know, standards uh, sort of stuff. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to remember who I, and I interviewed somebody. Might have been Joel Billings. I, I don't remember. One of those SSI, some of those SSI people. I remember they talked about how this is kind of the, you know, everybody just sort of roll their eyes when Buck Rogers, this Buck Rogers game was mentioned. They, they Nobody really wanted to work on it kind of the impression i get but it was just you've got to do it you know because we, we have access to it and by god <laughs> we're going to leverage this ip uh you know i don't know how fair that is you know I, I did go back and read some of the reviews of this game when it came out they're you know generally pretty positive and i do think it's kind of fun the uh, uh the innovations that they made to the uh, gold box engine but of course you know we'll, we'll get into all that in a minute and uh, so as usual with these um you know, with these games, I did get the Gold Box Companion app uh, to work for this. It was a little bit of a struggle because this game is not on GOG. I don't know what the heck's going on there. Uh, so you have to find it, source it in an alternative way, or from an alternative uh, source, I suppose. Uh, but once you get it up and running, 
Uh, you can use the gold box companion to get an auto map and you know all the stuff that we talked about in the last couple of videos. Uh, you're also going to need the rule book, you know, just like uh, any of those gold box games. And there's a log book that goes through the uh, journal entries and stuff. So it's got these. Is this the right book? Yeah, log entries, just like, a, again, with those journals from Polar Radiance, it'll refer you to uh, log entries. And I'm really excited about this, the Space Rat. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I'm not going to belabor all of this, because I really want to get into the game. Uh, so let's go ahead and get this puppy started, and we will create a party. Okay, let's try that again. <laughs> Yes, 2,000 cycles would probably be better. I had that thing on 10,000 cycles. It was just blur. And there we go. Brett Berry, game development. I see uh, Shelly and Laura Bowen are there uh, doing encounter code and graphic cards. Those are the, must be the, that must be where I got my behind the scenes info because I interviewed those. And Susan Manley's also there too, I see now. Uh, so it was one of those. <laughs> There we go. You can tell it's sci-fi because we got an LCD style font. <laughs> Looks like a calculator. My God, it's so sciencey, sci-fi. <laughs> All right, uh, let's go ahead and create a party. And I went and looked at my Patreons. Those noble folks who stepped up to the plate to keep my butt in this chair making these videos. So I feel like the least I can do is stick them in butt crotchers. <laughs> Uh, and I have, I've looked at the manual, I've studied the clue book. There's not a lot of, uh, there is a walkthrough out there, or FAQ, whatever you want to call it. It's for the Sega Genesis version. It's not really all that thorough. Uh, it just gives you some basic pointers. You know, they're mostly concerned about maps. You know, and, uh, be, uh, beating the game. I was looking like for more uh, tips about party creation and so on and so forth. And so I will be reviewing those. <coughs> as we go along here now as far as race is concerned uh, it is one of those games where there's penalties and perks to certain uh, races I think that's only in the manual where they spell these things out but uh, let's just take a quick gander at the uh, manual here in a second I'll find the right page as soon as Adobe Acrobat starts being crazy <laughs> Uh, yeah, here we go. Let me uh, flip to the manual here so you can see this. Uh, so we have Terrans, Martians, Venusians, Mercurians, Tinkers, and Desert Runners. And as you can see, they all have uh, certain career options. And then they have ability modifiers. And, you know, at least as, as far as I can tell, most of these are negative. Now, I can't find any really compelling reason not just to make a party of all Terrans. I don't know if there are some uh, story elements here, but if you look at like the, the these Martians, for example, you take a negative to your strength, a negative to your con, a negative to your wisdom, and then the only perks you get are a charisma and a dex perk. So it doesn't sound too great to me. Uh... The Desert Runner seems kind of interesting. You're kind of limited career-wise, but the only penalty they take is a Charisma, which is probably useless anyway. <laughs> uh, but they get a uh, plus two to the Strength, Dex, and Con, so it'd probably be worth looking at those uh, for a Rocket Jock Warrior or Engineer. But uh, other than that, I just don't see any real reason. Maybe a Mercurian. You know, now that I'm looking at this, they've got... Uh, if it's a class that doesn't need Strength, you know, you could get... De a dex and a con to make up for it so that that might actually be worth it uh, but those are the races and the careers uh we'll talk more about that i suppose once we get back to the uh, uh, character screen all right pick the race let's just make the first one terran because they uh you know it's pretty much all up no down for them they can do any class and then we've got rocket jocks medics warriors engineers and rogue uh, so let's briefly, briefly flash back to the logbook here. And we can break down what those are. All right, so rocket jocks are the 20th century 
uh, uh, wrote one 20th century author called The Right Stuff. All right, so I think these are just the pilots. Yes, 10% bonus to all piloting skills, and they have these career skills here. Drive a jet car, a ground car, maneuver in zero G, notice pilot fixed wing. So the advice I looked at said that you need to have at least one of each career in your party. Uh, so anyway, rocket jocks. Uh, the warrior. You know, I read this earlier. I didn't see anything that really seems all that different than you know, your typical warrior in any uh, CRPG. Uh, engineers are the ones who. Uh, I think they, this jury rig means like fixing the ship in combat, and they can also repair. You know, it might be important to repair life support at some point. I don't know. Sounds kind of useful. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Rogues. It's kind of an interesting uh, career in this context, but they, I guess these are kind of like hackers, right? Let's see, they can fast talk. Yeah, bypass security. Uh, then we have medics. Who are basically clerics. All right. So far, so good. Back to the game. <laughs> Let's go ahead and make the rocket jock first. You know, it's there. Okay, then we get this lovely re-rolling stats. I should, probably should have looked to see what stats are recommended for the rocket jock. Let me just do that real quick. You know, I'm probably going to be flipping back and forth to the to the manual quite quite often here, starting out. But, uh, let's see, rocket jock, ability score requirements: dex, int, and charisma. Probably dex and int. Let's see if we can learn a little bit more about those. What those stats do. You, know, you always have to to pay attention to that because it's not always the same. Let's see, int. Measures reasoning ability, memory, and general wit and cleverness. High intelligence is required for most careers in the 20th century. Stupidity kills. I wish that were true in our century. Well, let's see. Wisdom. Or then again, I might be dead if that were the case. So maybe I should be careful what I wish for. And what was the other one? Uh, charisma. Let's see, high charisma gives bonuses to such skills as intimidation and acting. Now, according to that walkthrough I looked at, that's actually a pretty big deal. So you might need to, that might be more important than you would think. And let's see, dexterity, hand-eye coordination, avoid getting hit, how fast you react, how well you can fire ranged weapons, or fly a rocket ship. All right, so dexterity, int, and charisma. So let's see, he's got a pretty bad scores in all of those. Yeah, so let's go ahead and re-roll. Let's see, we could just hit Y, I guess. Let's see, that's 16 score for Dex. Uh, wisdom, Charisma. Mm, I want at least a 16, at least a 15, let's say, in all of those scores. Let's see, there's a, uh, no, no, no. Okay, what about this? It's too low. Okay, int 17, charisma 14, dex 13, <laughs> dex 15, 13. Let's do a couple more rolls here. Okay, 16, 14, 16. This isn't great, but it's probably about as good as I'm going to get without having to really just sit here and do this 100 times. Right, so let's go ahead and uh, keep this, and we'll make this character's name Warp 10. Now we get on to the career skills. And again, this is uh, one of those things you probably want to study some walkthroughs for a while, but there's not a lot out there. Uh, apparently there are skills that are related just to certain careers, uh, but there's other ones that everybody can use. Um, I'm, again, going to have to just refer to something to try to get some kind of basic advice here on this. Let's see, what is that first one there? Notice. Okay. Perception, notice. I can't even find that one listed in the, in the walkthrough. Okay, hang on. I'm going to have to 
go back to my manual here. Let's see, what was it called? Notice. Here, you might as well see the manual while I'm doing this. Notice cannot be found. Oh, good lord. <laughs> What the notice? What? Why is that? Let's see, jury rig. It must be like a. A few of the listed skills are not actually used in Countdown to Doomsday. They have been included for use in sequel games. Hmm. All right. Let's see if we can find this one called Notice. Uh, it's here somewhere, right? <laughs> Uh, here, wisdom skill. Notice the skill of careful trained observation. Many times a character with high notice skill will see things that other team members miss. So it's basically perception. I, <laughs> I had to call it notice. <laughs> uh, you know, I might be just overthinking this to some extent. Let's. I know that maneuver in zero gravity is important for everybody. Let's go ahead. How many points? Man, I got a lot of these points. Jesus. Okay, let's put uh, 10 points in that. I guess we'll put some points in notice. Uh, use jetpack, pilot rocket. Sounds kind of important. Uh, pilot fixed wing. Is that... Okay. <laughs> no real guidance here or in the manual. I guess I might come across a jetpack. Let's just go uh, 15s across the board. And just start <clears throat> plugging in points this way. You know, a lot of times what happens here is you just have to uh, make some characters and once you get into the game and figure out like, well, that was a waste of points, you know, or <laughs> that was a good character. Uh, then you go back in and create your real, uh, my God, what is this? Technical skills. Oh, those were just career skills. Now we have technical skills. So there's good, oh, <laughs> a lot to know. Uh, let's see. Needs. I guess some of these we can't get. Bypass security. I thought that was a rogue thing. Let's see. Repair electrical, repair mechanical. I remember seeing that first aid was useful for everybody. Demolitions. You know, some of these, too, we only want to have uh, <coughs> one character with the skill. Uh, you know, I'm just going to have to um, just guess at some of these. Sensor operation. Sounds kind of important for a pilot. <laughs> Maximum per skill. Okay. So we gave him first aid, demolition, sensors, comms. I have no idea if that's a great character or terrible character. <laughs> Who knows? <coughs> well, that looks pretty good. Uh, okay, there's warp 10 done, sorted. Now let's make another character. I think we probably get six. Why don't we try the Desert Runner? Let's see, male. And do the Warrior. Okay, well that's pretty good uh, strength of 18. Con a little bit low. Let's just keep it though. Character name will be... Shearer. Ooh, weapon specialization. And I did read the manual earlier. It's kind of interesting about some of these. Like the microwave gun, uh, they said that was useless against anything with metal armor on. So I don't know how many things are going to be having metal armor, but that would be uh, useless. And since they got all that strength, though, I might want to go with like the sword or the cutlass. Uh, the mono knife is apparently sharp to one molecule. That's the... Somehow monocule. I don't know. <laughs> one, I guess one molecule sharp. <laughs> Let's try the mono sword. That sounds kind of fun. Okay. And there we are with that. Uh, the leadership, I think, is only something a warrior can learn. So let's pump that up a little bit. 
Yes, you want to have the maneuver in zero G apparently. Battle tactics? Yeah, sure, why not? Um, repair weapon. I guess that could come in handy. I don't know. Uh, move silently. Demolitions, maybe. I could use a jetpack. Put a couple points there. I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes you just have to go with uh, your gun on this. Repair electrical. So I guess they can all get some re some skills. Let's go ahead and plug some into. You know, probably wouldn't hurt for everybody to know a little bit about like operations. And I'll give them some repair points. Okay, done. Why does he have a crossbow? Let's see, it's supposed to be a sword. There we go. Is that? Yeah, I kind of like this one, I think. Yeah, let's go with that. There you are, sure. Let's make another one. Let's go for a... Um, what do we not have? We've got a warrior, rocket jock. Let's do the medic. Okay, let's see. The medic probably needs a good... Is it wisdom? Oh my god. <laughs> uh, let's see. Medics... Wisdom, yes. Sorry, I'm not showing you. I'm just looking at this. Yeah, AIDS medics. Okay, so standard D&D &D stuff. You need wisdom for your cleric or medic. So 15, not too bad. Strength's a little low. Yeah, let's just keep it. Character name will be Andrew. Treat light wounds. Yes. Why can't I do this? Oh, you need 30 points. Oh, that's a lot of points. Okay, now we can treat serious wounds. Diagnose sounds important. Uh, treating stun. Man, this is like really granular. Life suspension tech. Let's see. So critical wounds, we need 40 points. 40 points in serious wounds. It's probably not going to be able to get that high. I guess we'll go ahead and put some more points in diagnose. Okay, now they get their technical skills. Well, again, should I put... Does a medic need first aid? I don't know. Let's do this. I'm kind of imagining like a Star Trek situation. Well, probably not. Locks. <laughs> you know, maybe everybody needs to have a little bit of uh, technical expertise. Okay, this is our medic. Any of these look particularly medicinal? You know, that's typically not what I think of when I think about a medic. Try that. Yep. There you go, Andrew. Now on to Nikki. Let's make Nikki. I don't know if Nikki is a male or female. Nikki. Let's just go female, though, so we can have at least one <laughs> female in the party. <laughs> Let's see. So if you're a male Nikki, this must be some other Nikki. Let's see. Engineer. Let's see, that looks, tech. I'm guessing that tech score is what we want for engineering. You know, this is a pretty good roll just right off the, it's a little low, but, uh, you know, I kind of like that 19 wisdom and 18 charisma. A couple of high rolls in there. All right, Nick. Nitchy. All right, so they will want some repair for sure. Ooh, repair nuclear engine. Let's see, 25 points in repair mechanical. Okay, and then 30 points in repair electrical. Oh, 
why you need all that just to learn some, get some points in life support. Ooh, I think they need some, uh, I think we're going to need at least a few points in this jury rig. Ooh. Let's see, bypass security, open lock, comm operations, sensor. I don't know if I should be like specializing these guys. No clue. Hopefully it's not that hard of a game. That's all we can hope for at this point. All right, this is our engineer. I look kind of like an engineer. Okay, there's Nikki. Now we got Michael and Clinton. And let me think. What do we? Okay, we we don't have a rogue. All right, this will be our rogue, and so we're going to need a high. Oh, yeah, we want a better. Uh, I'm thinking maybe like an 18 dex. Oh, that's 16. Look at those other rolls. Pretty good. Keep this for Michael. And for him, probably going to want some bypass security, some open locks, some. Hide in shadows. There's a sounds familiar. Move silently, pick pockets, climb, and let's do the fast talk. Convince. I actually heard that's a pretty key skill. Okay, and then back to this. Probably wouldn't hurt. Put some points into comms and sensors, demolitions, first aid, repair a weapon. Yeah, stick a couple points in there. I don't... Yeah, that looks kind of roguish. Yep. So what are we up to? Six? Pretty sure you get six. Let's go ahead and uh, make one more. Yeah, just for fun. What do you, what do you want to do one of these other ones? No, Merc Mercurian. And let's see, probably another where. Reroll stats. Ooh, look at that dex. Wow, that's some great rolls. Yeah, let's stick to this. Character name will be Clinton. Okay, so the other guy had a sword. Why don't we give this one a rocket rifle? <laughs> that sounds pretty cool. Do that. Leadership. Battle tactic, maneuver, a jet pack. I'm kind of excited about these jet packs. It sounds kind of cool. Pump some more points into leadership. I don't, again, I don't know if that's one of those things that only applies to one person. I guess we will find out. Uh, first aid, sensor. Maybe I'll put some, a lot of points into repair for him. Can have a little backup just in case something happens to my engineer. Oh yeah, let's go with the, that. Okay, add him to the party. So we will put, let's put our, war, our uh, warriors first. And that was what, uh, I've already forgotten what's what. <laughs> just add them all. Let's see, view. That's our medic. Okay, we don't want our medic first. You know, I might have to begin the adventure, though, before we can mess with that part of it. So let's just go ahead and begin. Actually, maybe I'll save first. And character, save current game, begin adventuring. After hearing of the bravery of Buck Rogers and the New Earth Organization, you have decided to join Neo and fight the Ram Menace that is terrorizing this system. There's a hand. I wonder if that's supposed to be Gil there from the show. Uh, as new recruits, Neo has brought you to the Chicago spaceport for orientation. Sounds fun. Uh, shortly after you arrive, you are summoned to the lecture hall. Oh, you do not want to be summoned to the lecture hall. 
He settled into the uncomfortable chairs, itching to get this done and be off into space. I know the feeling. The nervous chatter dies down as the room lights fade. A hologram fills the front of the room as a voice intones, Earth, the cradle of civilization, has been badly battered during the 25th century. It has become the solar system's dumping ground. Ouch. <laughs> but now, Thanks to the thousands like you who are willing to put their lives on the line, we can start to remake this planet into the shining jewel it deserves to be. The hologram transforms into a human face. It smiles and speaks, I am Carlton Turabian, and I will be your commanding officer. I am sure you are anxious to begin your tour with Neo, so I will be brief. It's a little bit. So you will be assigned to our secret salvation station, secret salvation station, and given salvage and patrol missions. Do not despair. Okay, uh, prove uh, yourself adept at your work, and the combat missions will come all too soon. That is all. You will be escorted to a shuttle and brought immediately to the station. You have your basic equipment. Dismissed. You are marched out. <laughs> oh, suddenly, ships scream in low from the north. Pandemonium reigns as the fighters drop their deadly cargo. Ships and control towers collapse in balls of crimson flame. People panic and scatter. And this is some, some good artwork on this. Really enjoying that. Your officers are down, and the other recruits are fleeing to the four winds. You have been thrust headfirst into a raging battle. <laughs> okay, and there we go. Um, okay, first thing I want to do is try to change the order of my... Oops. So he's the medic, we'll put him last. Uh, let's see, Clinton is the... Warrior, okay, that's... Good then. And we have a rogue. Probably want to move the rogue. Let's see, change order. Michael, probably like there. And let's see, what is Nikki? Nikki is the engineer. Yeah, move her. Probably down there. And let's see, what is warp 10 is our. Rocket job. And Shearer is our warrior. Okay, what is Michael Rogue? Okay, let's swap those two. Okay. Should be good. Save it. And I'm going to actually quit this uh, so I can turn on my Gold Box Companion. So I'll be right back with that. Alright, so I've got my gold box companion lined up here you can see the uh, auto map and the uh, character icons up there and their hit points so it's quite useful i'm glad it works as advertised oh, let's see skier skills so it looks like their equipment is already readied this guy has a bolt gun tray drop exit there's the skills, weapon spec, okay, area, this is definitely going to take a little getting used to coming from the, uh, you know, something like Pool of Radiance and Dragon Lance. Let's see, look, transports have followed in behind me. Excuse you, uh, <laughs> transports have followed in behind the attacker's Fi at the attacking fighters, Tyrans, Tyrans are jumping out and engaging the disorganized Neo troops. Some are landing on the main building. And then there's their auto map. It's built into the game. It's not going to be as good as my... Uh... <laughs> All right, I'll get rid of that view. Uh, but anyway, yeah, just already I, I like the, the look of this game. You know, you could tell they really put some thought into making it 
look a little bit more futuristic. Kind of fit that Buck Rogers vibe. The font's kind of futuristic looking. The uh, the graphics on the windows are really cool. You know, it feels kind of like you're playing Pool of Radiance, but then they, you know they make it different enough with the, those the skylines. <laughs> Let's see. It's like they made the familiar strange again. An officer is collapsed here, mortally wounded by shrapnel. He coughs weakly and motions you close to him. He whispers, Missile controls. Main room. Enemy must have cut automatics. Activate the defense. Ah! I don't know if you whispered that last part. It's got three exclamation points. <laughs> I'm going to assume that was not whispered. He convulses once and lies still. Activate the defense. So I guess we got to find this defense. Can we go inside here? See, the small room contains monitors for the fueling tanks. They are all, all, they are all red-lined. The fuel stores have been struck in the attack. I guess there's nothing to do in there. The ram surprise attack has been devastatingly effective. No officers are in sight to give directions. The only organized units are ter Terrans. I'm just going to say Terrans. If it's Terrans, I'm sorry. Uh, who are sweeping the area. Two of the recruits who were going to the shuttle lie across the doorway. They were shot in the back as they tried to enter the building. Well, let's see. Can we look at their bodies? Nope. Well, let's just continue on. I usually don't want to go inside a room until I've explored the area. Uh, these security doors have been shattered. Slain Neo and Terran forces lie draped over one another. Okay, what's in here? Gotta be something to fight here. Oh, here we go. Terrans have spotted you and are moving in for the kill. Neo forces come to your aid. Using leadership skill, Clinton leads Neo Warrior. Shearer leads Neo Warrior. At this point, I don't know what the heck that even means. All right. So we've got... Uh, looks like one, two, three, four, five enemies. He's, he could do a quick option, dodge, wait, sprint. I think the sprint is like a dash in modern parlance. Let's see if we can target. Yeah, there's our enemy, Terran Warrior. All right, boom, boom, boom. This guy also has a bolt gun. You know, I thought I gave one of them a sword. Yeah, I guess he doesn't come with a sword. I have to find that later, I suppose. Well, let's just do the gun for now. One point of damage. Well, <laughs> like a, what is this, like a staple gun? They've all got those. Okay. I don't see any other options other than just to use this gun. Miss. Three, three. Ooh, they got laser pistols. Oh, so I guess I, I'm in control of some of these uh, Neo Warriors. One, two. There's Nikki. One down. Oh, she's down to three health. Let's see, do I have any other options here? Can I heal up or something? I don't see any other options. Move, target, view. Let's see, skills. Can't, I guess I can't apply like first aid. Quick, wait, dodge, sprint. I don't know, maybe just keep shooting. Next. 
Ooh, this might be a pretty tough battle, you know? Check. Whoop, whoop. Here's Clinton, come on, Clinton. You know, at least he's going to the right enemy this time and not, you know, just hitting all my guys. Next. Oh, maybe they fix that part, that'd be pretty cool. Let's see, targets. Next. No, not him. Him. I don't know to what extent it keeps track of, like, how far away they are. Oh, Mickey's down. Like, should I be trying to get in closer? I don't see them moving in closer. Yeah, it's probably, I should probably get in closer to him, I guess. Let's try that. Okay, target. Yeah, it says range short. So when I target, if I get out to here, it's medium range. Okay, so I guess that's still within within range. Now what about that body? <laughs> Surely I can help or something, right? Let's see, target. No. Quick. Guard. Wait. Uh, I don't know if there's like a bandage option. Let's get two. I don't see any other options there, so I'm just going to operate from now under the assumption that we're just fighting. Two. Targets. Yeah, okay, medium range. First battle! I'm getting hit with AoEs. <laughs> oh. These guys aren't playing around. I don't know if Nikki is permanently dead or what. I hate to, have to reload already. Is that grenade? Because they have an unlimited supply of those. Alright, that was the leader. Warp 10. Down he goes. Healing completed. Is that automatic? Let's see. The team has won. Each character receives 75 experience points. The team has found booty. <laughs> Not that kind of booty. Yay. Take Divi. This looks familiar, doesn't it? So credits, gear, oh lord, I uh, guess just take it all. Divvy up the gold, I assume. Exit. So did that actually, it looks like everybody's automatically brought back to health after the battle. Man, that would be sweet. That would definitely be nice. Let's just confirm that. Who was it, Nikki, that took the damage? Yeah, look, uh, up to eight, eight head points. This is great. So I guess as long as, uh, you know, it seems like I remember reading in the clue book or somewhere that as long as the medic survives, they uh, you're good to go because they can just bring everybody back. All right, now we need to decide. So she's got a space suit already. Let's see, where are my items at? Didn't I take a bunch of items? <laughs> Uh, view weapon trade. Trade. Oh, he got them all. Okay, so what's he got? A bolt gun. I need to figure out if a laser pistol is better than a bolt gun. Okay, I'm not gonna bore you by constantly going back and forth to the manual. Just this one time. 
So you can get a feel for what this would be like. <laughs> okay, somewhere in the back here is probably a... Um, I don't see it. Usually there's like a weapons table. Let's see, warrior level, armor, weapons table, page 40, okay. If only I could see page numbers, that would be very helpful. <laughs> oh, there they are. Right where you at least expect to see them. Okay, and then going on down, I guess I was right on the page. Oh, quit doing that. Quit trying to be helpful. All right, so what was it? A laser pistol? Let's see. Does 1d8 damage. Has a 3 rate of fire. So it looks like it does twice as much damage. Or twice as... Has twice the range as the bolt gun. Does 1d8 instead of 1d4, but you only get 3 shots. <coughs> Probably a better weapon. <laughs> I don't know. Let's try it out. You can always change it. I'm going to assume that's the same smart suit. So let's give everybody else a laser pistol. Trade to Michael. Trade to Warp 10. Trade to Nikki. Maybe Nikki could stay alive long enough. <laughs> Does that give me any? Let's just take a look here. So Thacko 16. Let's get rid of that. Try the bolt gun. So the Thacko stays the same. So that's not a problem. Damage is 1d8, like it said in the manual. So let's go ahead and uh, let's just just uh, stick to that. You know, I notice it's got numbers in parentheses. I guess that's 247 bullets or batteries or whatever the hell this thing takes. I wonder if that runs out. Does it mean it's just gone? Is there reloading? Man, so many questions. Uh, view... Now this this part's a little bit clunky, you know, having to go in here and ready, ready all these weapons, but you usually don't have to do this too many times in these games. Okay, Nikki had one. Okay. So I'm sorry, Andrew. You're still stuck with that bolt, that stapler gun. <laughs> okay. That was just a random encounter. As you approach Terran's attack from the doorway. Oof. Damn, I got ambushed that time. All right, let's try these uh, laser pistols. Boom, boom, boom. Ooh, I don't know, but damn. There's a lot of these guys, and I don't have a... I still don't know. I'm going to have to look up to see if there's some way to heal in the mystic combat or what. Seems like I should have more... Oh, there's an aid. Okay, what does that do? Okay, so there's their bandage. I don't know why I didn't show up last time. Two points... I'm doing a decent amount of damage, but is it going to be enough? Oh, I guess you can't get around that corner. This is going to be it's going to be close. This game's not playing around difficulty wise. At least I'm hitting. It's not like freaking pool of radiance where you miss like every time. Alright. What about... Yeah, let's go for that one. 
I see it, it puts their AC there. This guy's got an AC of two. He's going to be harder to hit, so let's take out the crazy one first. You know, it's saying something about a, it's flashing something about a tactics roll. It's, it's, it's happening so quick. I can't make it up. I should probably get it. Oh, there goes Clinton. Oh, and Warp 10. Jesus. You know, I think I might not survive this. Oh, not a good time to be missing. All right, Nikki's coming through for us this time. Still gotta get this big guy. I guess we need to, to move a little bit. Let's see, move. That should be good. What if they're, I guess there's no cover, taking cover mechanic in this game. It's gonna be hard to hit. So I got three guys left. Ooh, this is brutal. Oof. Come on, take him down, damn it. Four points. Oh, yes, that's something about a tactics roll. Oh, he flees. What the? Where the hell are you going? Oh. Can't go there, target. Oh, I think I went up the wrong side. <laughs> Damn it. Oh, guarding, okay. Man, he really hauled. Oh, what the? That was cheap. Can you see that crap? Okay. Don't. Oh. Thought I saw that aid button back. You have to be like right on top of them to aid them, maybe? No. Man, I don't want to let this bastard get away. Oh, he missed. Oh, I got away. All right, healing completed. Treating, treating wounds. I guess we survived. 150 and the team has found beauty. All right, divvy up the gold. Let's see. You know, unfortunately, I just don't know if I should be picking up everything. You know, I guess just take everything. I have no, no clue. The battle has fused the door shut. You must enter through another door. That was... Oh, some of my guys are still damaged, though. Well, what the heck is that all about? Ew, I gotta have to rest. I can't fight it again like this. Put that on. Well, let's see. Don't quit. I don't see a camp option. I'm definitely going to die, though, if I can't fix these characters. Why is he... Why didn't it fix him? Uh, where's my medic? Skills. I don't see any way to use the skill. Uh, exit. Look, change. Hold on, I gotta figure this out. Alright, so I went to CRPG Addict's blog. He's played this game. Uh, and according to him, you're just kind of screwed in this situation. We have to fight again, and then there'll be that auto heal. There's no. Apparently, uh, there's some medic. There's a hospital somewhere here we can go to, but otherwise, there's no manual way to uh, to heal. And we're already fighting again. This time we got some neo forces. Oh, I keep forgetting. I need to lower the speed of those messages. 
Oh, this guy's nice and close. So we just have to get through this, make sure our medic doesn't die. Oh, hope that wasn't the medic. Alright, he's down. Which one is our medic? God, I gotta take better notes. <laughs> you! A heavy round. Shearer is the warrior. Good target. You know, I hope I get the appropriate weapons from my warriors. I kind of feel like I'm wasting that weapon specialization. Nikki's the engineer. Michael is the rogue. Warp 10 is a rocket junk. Oh, Warp 10 down again. Damn it. Who the hell is our... Who's our medic? <laughs> I know I made one. Dead already? Maybe. Oh, is it... It's definitely not Nikki. Who's left then? Must... It's either Andrew or Michael. Man, just is it Clinton? Nope. Okay, come on, get that guy! Oh, he's got one point of damage left. Alright, Andrew. Andrew's the medic. He's got 12 hit points, so we should be good. I guess we just need to beef up his... Uh, Yeah, what's with the aid? So I guess sometimes you need to aid them, sometimes you don't. I don't see any kind of aid option there. Okay, let's see if we can take that guy. He's got one point left. Boom! Good job, Andrew! An attack. I could probably save some time just using my keys. T N A. T N A. Oh. G N A. <laughs> End up hitting myself, I know it. <laughs> Alright, uh, should be good. G for guard. Mish healing completed. Okay, so they healed. So how does this work? Medic. Andrew, Andrew. Warp 10. Patient. Man, I just, I'm baffled by this. So he gets, uh. Andrew worked on Clinton. Worked on Sure, then worked on Sure again, then worked on Warp 10. Man, I, have, I just have no clue. 60, you got some more booty, divvy it up. Take. Ooh, there's some Dazzle Grenades. You know, I think the Rogue ought to have our Dazzle Grenades. Uh, laser Pistols, yeah. Hopefully we can sell these things. All right, I guess everybody's back up to snuff. Let's continue our little exploration of this starting area. Let's see, Ram has total air superiority. Neo's anti-ship defenses are silent and their fighters destroyed on the pad. It is getting dangerous to be outside. The ships are beginning to strafe the infantry. So does that mean we need to be going inside one of these buildings? Maintenance workers tried to use this garage for cover. A patrol of Terrans obviously spotted them. The walls are stained crimson. Well, let's go in here. This building housed firefighting equipment. The Terrans, Terrans have gutted the structure and destroyed the robots. Okay. The heat from the explosions drives you back. You are, you are very exposed out here on the tarmac. So it's strongly hinting that I need to get into a building. Clinton commands. 
using leadership skill. So I guess the leadership skill lets me control these NPCs. You know, I don't wonder how useful that's going to be in the long run. All right, there's a good target. Miss T and A. Yeah, I guess I could put them on the quick controls, but I don't know if I can ever get it back off of that setting. Main thing is you just want to keep hitting the one that's damaged already. Because if they've only got one hit point left, they can still do full damage. Okay. Boom. Down he goes. Man, for some reason this has more like a western vibe to it. I don't know if you see these pistols. Long range, short range. Yeah, it still assumes I want to target my own people about half the time. And you know, what situation would you want to shoot your own guys? Only thing I could think of is if they were like under a charm spell, and even then I would want to dispel the magic, not kill them. I'm gonna have to look that up too. I'm not sure what these tactical rolls are all about. Oh, the Neo Warrior's down. Well, at least it's not one of my guys. <laughs> Five. Boom, got him. Nice clean shot. Good job, Michael. Okay, keep on shooting. You know, they, they probably should have. I know this is kind of early days for these, this kind of stuff, but uh, you know, some kind of cover mechanic would have been cool. You know, it just kind of feels silly, just like standing out in the middle of a, <laughs> a factory floor, just, you know, shooting your guns. You know, every instinct is like, get behind a, Get behind one of those structures. Okay, healing completed. Team is one. More booty. Good, good. Do you have the gold? Take. Oh, there's some more of those uh, dazzle grenades. Maybe I should uh, use those dazzle grenades next time. All right, hold up a second. I'm going to see if I can figure out what those rolls are all about. All right, so apparently what that is, there's a battle skills check. I know you can't see it on there, but it says the computer automatically makes a battle tactic skill check for any characters with the skill. If any character is successful, the entire team receives a plus one combat bonus because they are better able to act as a group. All right, and the leadership skill check is done. When NPCs join the team, they will fight under computer control. Unless somebody has leadership skill, then that might switch them to your control. Okay, I guess that's what we need to know for now. So clearing up some of these mysteries as we go. All right, move. You know, have we explored that building down there? Let's see, a fighter screams past and sprays your team with laser fire. Ouch. I guess it didn't hurt us. Well, I guess we'll go ahead and explore this room. I don't... Oh, here comes somebody. Ter Terrans have spotted you and are moving in for the kill. Neo forces come to your aid. I guess there's going to be quite a bit of this. You know, I'm tempted to... Let's try out the quick combat. You know, this is simple enough combat. I don't necessarily know why I need to be, like, targeting everything. Let me put them all on quick, and then we'll see what it takes to undo it if I need to. Sometimes the quick combat, the problem is it won't, like, aid your falling people. I think 
just about all on quick put that guy quick no injuries were sustained man <laughs> maybe that's the secret just put it on quick combat got some more you know, I don't know if I need to take all these damn items. I, I might just take the grenades for a while. I don't want to get too overloaded with these pistols. And then, but then it asks you, are you sure? I don't know if I got any more room, like loaded down with gear. I hope there's a place to sell this crap. Okay, let's continue to move along the wall. That probably just goes back outside. Alright, here comes some more. Put them all in quick combat again. So it doesn't keep them on quick combat permanently. That's good. Definitely speeds things up though. It's a little quick to read, but so let's just say I, oh, the battle's over. I got to remember next time. I want to see if I can. I believe you hit the space bar to stop it. From doing the quick combat. Okay. And I'm just going to leave that stuff. I know, I know. All right. Make sure to save. I wonder how close my guys are to leveling. 2000 XP. A sign above the door reads, Authorized Personnel Only. Ram forces have secured this room. You, you burst in amongst a squad of Tyrans. In the background, you can see a Ram technician working on a missile control panel. Alright. Go back. Whoa, what was that? Did he use a dazzler grenade? See, that's why you don't want quick control right there. It's just going to start lobbing grenades at just one person. Hey, yeah, look, the computer's playing with itself. <laughs> so much easier, though. Okay, so let's say I wanted to stop it here. Boom. I hit the space bar. So, boom. Now I can take back control. Let's just say I want to like move in a little closer maybe. Target. Attack. Man, he's really taking a lot of damage. Andrew. Okay, I'm gonna go back to quick combat now. Remember too, if it really bothers you, like they don't have the right weapons on their icons, and I'm pretty sure I could go in and change that. Matter of fact, I would try that next time. But if assuming I survive this, Jesus, Mickey's down, Got two characters down. So they bandage on quick combat too. Oh damn! Oh, can't do they ever flip and miss? Jesus! This is a tough fight here. I probably should not have done this on quick combat. Damn, that was brutal. Yeah, look, my characters are all damaged now. That sucks. Uh, more of these grenades. Nothing different there. Almost wondering if I shouldn't save this. 
One of them's down to zero health. And see, with one hand, the technician begins firing at you. He is still modifying the controls with the other. If you shoot at him, you may damage the controls which operate the base's missiles. What do you do? Shoot, charge, or take cover? Shoot. <laughs> Who shoots? Clinton's shot is true. The technician collapses to the floor with his blood flecked lips curl and a smile. He hisses, If the missiles don't, won't fire on Chicagorg, they won't fire at all. He grabs a grenade and pulls the pin. You can either dive on it or die for cover. Will anyone make the sacrifice? <laughs> Sorry, Clinton. <laughs> Clinton is hit for 10 points of damage. Clinton has muffled the explosion. The missile controls are unharmed. You set the missiles to anti-ship mode. Soon you hear the crunch of enemy spaceships crashing. Robbed of air superiority, the ram surprise attack is quickly beaten back. You are roundly congratulated as your wounds and your wounds attended to. Congrats. Something too quick to read. Uh, you were given a small reward for your... Yeah, you just saved Earth. Here's a small reward. Here, have a Twinkie. <laughs> have a donut. <laughs> okay, Dibby. I guess we got a little gold out of that. You are paraded to a newly arrived shuttle and ferried to Salvation 3. The man from the hologram greets you. I guess we won. Did we win the game? <laughs> I am Carlton Terabian, commander of the space. And you record his speech as, oh, logbook entry 41. I can barely contain my excitement. We get to go to the journal. Let's see, which one was it? It was uh, do, 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 41. All right, where is 41? Oh, it's a nice, beefy one. Get it up here where you can see it too. Hold on. All right, there we go. A little easier to see. Uh, log cabin, log in, log cabin, uh, log entry 41, Carlton Tarabian's speech. Congratulations on your exemplary performance at the Chicago Spaceport. Your courage saved countless lives and preserved the spaceport. Not sure whose voice I want to do with it. I'm feeling kind of like a Captain Kirk vibe. Huh? <laughs> Those vile mercenaries won't stop until we're all dead and buried. He pauses for a second, then continues. Because of your performance, I am waiving your waiting period and assigning you to a space tug immediately. Remember, Gathering money for the cause is as important as slaying a dozen <laughs> ram agents. Uh, he turns around. He's not like a politician, doesn't he? Uh, he turns around and leads you to the main corridor of the base. We have everything that you need here. Many things are free. Fuel, repairs, medical assistance, and supplies. On other worlds, you can draw on an account from the Bank of Luna. You will have available a portion of any salvage you recover. You will also have to provide for your own personal up, your own personal equipment and upkeep. Freshen up <laughs> and see me in my office. <laughs> the commander turns and melts into the crowd. Okay, back to the game. Your tug is fueled and waiting. Oh, so the tug is, is this like the, our ship? <laughs> the tugboat? <laughs> where do you wish to go? Uh, where do we sell of our, all that stuff? The depot, maybe? Uh, what do you wish to do? Sell. Yes, yeah, sell the space suit. 250 credits. Hold on, before we do that, let's make sure that's the standard price. Okay, yeah. Jeez. You can make a lot of money here. I'm glad I picked up the stuff. I'll 
always grabbing let's see a bolt gun and yeah, probably how much do they will they give me from the laser pistol so the laser pistol is 167 credits the bolt gun is only 105 credits that's another sign that maybe the bolt guns not all that great let's go ahead and sell it okay good good oh I didn't know I had another character oh, I could have got some more laser pistols and spacesuits ugh So, I don't know how big of an advantage this is going to give me. Maybe I should keep the one that has the most ammo. Again, I haven't seen a recharge ability here yet. It could be I should be holding on to like three or four of these things. There's got to be a way to reload, right? Some ammo. Exit. Yes, quality viewing. Quality adventuring. As Matt tries to figure out if it's possible to reload a laser pistol. They could be just one off devices. I don't know. A smart suit. Yeah, we've got like thousands of credits. Okay, sell the bolt gun. And one more. I do see an option there called ammo. Ready, the one with most ammo, and sell the rest. And we ought to reach. Gonna open up our own our own depot with all this. Yeah, look, ammo. Okay, let's see what this does. Um, fill. Clip. What? <laughs> Clip 35. Fill 175. Um, what? <laughs> fill. Okay, clip. What is the... Oh, what? Clip zero. Does this mean like I could have a extra 250 rounds? Let's try. Already full. That is weird. I don't quite understand that. Let's see. Clip. What in God's name? Clip zero, fill zero. So those are filled already. So maybe it means that the clip has 35. What is clip option? Nikki purchases a clip. What? Man, I do not get that. I guess you're filling up your clip. Man, I'm going to have to look it up. Sorry. Hold on. Well, I still haven't found an answer to that question, but I did find a pretty fun uh, clue book. I'll show you the cover here in a minute. Uh, but th this is like a book with a, it's called Quest for Clues 4. A bunch of uh, role-playing games in here. Uh, but they say you need two warriors and one each rocket jock, medic, rogue, and engineer. So we actually got right on that. Strength is only important in melee combat. So we kind of messed up there, I suppose. Uh, they also say... Um, they talk in here about... Dazzle grenades. So we need goggles. Let's try to figure out where we can get those. Magical stink clouds are replaced by gas grenades. The only set of battle armor with fields in the game is obtained in the later stages by clearing a mining outpost. Yada yada. 
<clears throat> anyway, this is Quest for Clues by good old Shay Adams. Man, I need to get Shay Adams on the show at some point. You know, he's he's got a great book about Ultima too. Uh, not Ultima two, uh, but Ultima the series, and he's got interviews in there. And it's it's a good book if you can track it down. It's like a Ultimate Guide to Ultima, something like that. But anyway, yeah, I don't something about the clip. So you got Phil and then Clip. Maybe some weapons have multiple clips. I, I don't know. Oh, no, I don't want to leave. Let's go into the... Uh, let's see what we can buy. <laughs> okay, poison antidotes, jet pack, rope, breathing mask. My goodness. I'm going to have to go back and try to remember what the hell I uh, gave those guys for their weapons. Also, there's a smart suit and a space suit. I don't know if I noticed those are different things. Oh, great. He's got the smart suit. That's why his AC is zero. He's only got the space suit. Ah, oh, see, I didn't pick up on that. So that's why I'm probably doing so badly. I need to get these guys into uh, smart suits instead of just uh, crummy old space suits. Okay, well, let's see what else we might need. Those are 1200 a pop, man. We can only buy one. Oh, that was a bad oversight. I should have grabbed those while they were <laughs> there for the taking. Let's see. Microwave gun, rocket pistol, laser pistol. Uh, I could give these guys swords. Cutlasses, knives. What was the one guy who had like a mono sword and the other one was a laser rifle? So I really can't outfit them better. Do I need a jetpack or a poison antidote? I'm just going to try to buy one smart suit. Let's put it on our, uh, our medic. Make sure he doesn't have one already. And let's go ahead and sell his space suit well hold on let me make sure he can wear it because sometimes these games won't let you wear stuff let's see smart suit okay so his AC was four yep he can wear it where's his AC two okay so that was very good Wish I had grabbed all those other uh, smart suits or not sold them. Yeah, sell that crummy old space suit. All right, that's probably about all we can do. Where do you want to go? Bar, clinic, depot, HQ, or port? Well, should we go see the... We need to freshen up. I guess we freshen up at the clinic. Dr. Hill's everyone in the team. Well, that was easy enough. Eh, I'm always touring. Do you go to the bar or do you go to the boss? I guess we got to get business done before pleasure. Take the tug and search for useful items. Meanwhile, use our training facilities. Okay. All right, this is another menu so we can change up our icons. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, let's see. So he's actually, they've all got these pistols. Select a body icon. No. Oh, that stinks. Oh, okay. So that kind of stinks. Yeah, in the, in the, in the older, uh, the Polar Radiance, you can actually swap out weapons and stuff. Uh, I guess with this one, you can only select a different icon. All right, well, that is what it is, I suppose. You think they would uh, at least swap out the weapons. Okay, train character. Can we train yet? A level three warrior? What, he start off at level two? Congratulations! <laughs> oh, no, now we're back to this. <laughs> uh, leadership. 
you know, the battle tactics was pretty useful. Add some points to that, I suppose. Uh, maneuver and zero G. Demolitions, repair weapon. You know, I, I, if I ever need to repair a weapon, that's probably going to be. I wonder if demolitions covers stun grenades. Move silently, notice. Uh, leadership. Just do that. Okay. Technical skills. First aid. Pump some points into that. You know, really, I still don't... I couldn't tell you what about half this does. Just kind of going with instinct. <laughs> I mean, there's a whole other screen. <laughs> Jesus. Oh. Wow, so there's a lot more technical skills than I thought there were. Train, sure. It's a good thing these are warriors. Probably not that big a deal if they don't get the right training. Okay, so there's only these skills for their career. So maybe that means that the other ones are kind of superfluous. Okay, yeah, look. Wow. There are a lot of skills, my god. Let's see, you got technical skills, intelligence skills, dexterity skills, charisma skills, wisdom skills. Wow. Uh, let's just keep pumping up the ones that seem necessary. Let's see. Let's see if anybody can learn to program that. Library search, pilot rocket, drive ground car, hide in shadows, acrobatics, climb. You know, I assume our rocket jock guy is going to need that. Singing? <laughs> Etiquette? <laughs> oh, you know what the hell you sing. I've always wanted to sing. <laughs> Etiquette. <laughs> What, I can't learn etiquette? No new skills allowed at this time. Well, I still got some points. Oh. Interesting. So I guess you gotta have some... Some points in it already? Man, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> you probably know that. Repair mechanical. Oh, fine. You know, it's probably a little bit too much going on here for... There's probably too many skills. Yeah, let's see. He wants to fast talking, moving silently, hiding in the shadows, opening locks. I'm pretty sure this will come in handy eventually. Okay, so yeah, there's, look at all these skills. Befriend animal. Intimidate. Let's try a couple of these. So let's, maximum per skill. Act. Uh, let's try act. Okay, so let me do that. And then what about intimidate? No new skills at this level. So maybe every time you level up, you can start popping points into another skill. Yeah, this is quite nuanced here. Definitely nuanced. I'm not clear at all what's actually vital <laughs> and what's just kind of nice to have, what's totally useless. I'm just going to assume a rocket pilot needs to be able to pilot a damn rocket. Let's see. Drive a jet car. 
probably needs to know how to drive a car. Let's just put the rest of these in rockets. Oh boy, this screen again. Uh, technical skills. Uh, this is probably all there in the manual in substantial detail. Let's try that. You know, astronomy sounds like something useful for a for navigation. What do we need there? Astronomy, mathematics. No general skill points left. Oh, I used them up already. Huh? Did I? Why don't I put those points in? Okay, let's take a couple. Can I take that all the way down to zero? <laughs> no, okay. Astronomy, add. You know, some of these might just be good for role playing possibilities. I, I don't know. Congratulations. Okay, let's go ahead and. He's our repair guy, so I'm going to put points into everything with something to do with repair. Okay, now he's got 15, so he can go 15 in any skill. He's got 20 points total. Okay, makes sense. Let's see, next. So that guy was trying to do programming on. Here's these piloting skills again. Okay, tracking, shadowing. You know, math sounds kind of useful for an engineer, wouldn't you say? Put some points into that. And what else? So for navigation, we need astronomy and mathematics. Astrogation. I can program a computer. Find a perfect prime. Well, we got a couple more points left. I'll max that out. And do the comms. <laughs> This is like totally random classes at college, you know. Yeah, put me down for weightlifting and bowling and diagnosing. You see there, maximum for skill 15, but it let me put fifth, put points in. Oh, career skill, maximum for skill 15. So maybe that's just at one time. Serious wounds. Critical wounds. Is there any reason to put more points into like the lesser one? Treat disease. You gotta probably need to do that at some point. Okay, there we go. Next. Disguise. Doctor in disguise. Intimidate singing. You know, a distraction. <laughs> You know, it's like a bedside manner, maybe, to distract you as he's cutting into you. Uh, and do the sensors. Why not? All right, save that garbage. <laughs> <sighs> That's a lot of work. I forgot what we were supposed to do. Uh, where do you wish to go? Bar? Yes, I need a drink. You enter the Salvation the Salvation Lounge. Where do you go? Buy drink, order food, talk, wait. Buy a drink. You get a oh there's no joke. What is it? The gargle blaster? From Hitchhiker's Guide, something gargle blaster. Zephod Beeblebrox. Oh that was what's the point of that? You get a drink. <laughs> well, that's exciting. Uh, order food. Okay. You order some food. 
<laughs> oh, there's something. Never trust a digital personality, urges a bar patron. You got a drink? A soldier, a soldier shares some gossip. So you got to get to your third beer before you get chatty. Now, I hear a Ram packing company lost their contract for Jenny for Jenny containment units. Well, we could just try talking. You talk. <laughs> you talk. <laughs> Come on. You talk. Uh, what about waiting? You wait around. Man. You know, the game's not going to win any awards for that. Uh, what have we not done? We haven't done the port. You are in the Salvation Port area. What do you do? Launch? Repair? Fuel might be nice. Let's gas up. Ship is refueled. Ammo. Neotechnicians reload your weapons and restock your extra ammo. Medical supplies. Your medical supplies are restocked. Launch. Repair. Should we just repair? <laughs> repair your ship? <laughs> yes, everything. Uh, launch. I think this will be a free launch. Didn't have to pay for any of that other stuff. As you prepare your tug, you receive a message from the base commander. Good luck on your first mission for Neo. The base controller okays you for launch and starts the countdown. The final countdown. Do -do -do, do -do 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 -do. No sound effects or music. You have to supply your own. Oh, there was one. <laughs> That's all we get. Uh, the engines roar as you shoot down the launching bay. Suddenly you are out of salvation and into open space. You can see for miles and miles. You see miles and miles of space junk strewn around the base. You maneuver through the junk and head out in search of salvage. Oh, I got plenty of junk here. You search the space debris that orbits Earth. After a couple of days, your sensors locate something unusual. You have found a derelict spaceship drifting amongst the debris. What do you do? Search the ship or return to base? <laughs> yeah, I want to return to base because, man, that bar was just a happening place. You know, I wonder if I should return to base. <laughs> you approach the base. You radio the information on the derelict ship to the com commandant. The commander speaks. Go and bring the ship back to salvation, you dummy. You turn around and return to the <laughs> derelict ship. <laughs> Well, this is what I was afraid. This is why I returned, you know, bring back some reinforcements. I knew there was something happening in here. Let's see, alarm klaxons. You know, and where else do you see that word klaxon? Oh, but a game like this. I've never seen that word anywhere but in some kind of sci fi game. Uh, anyway, klaxons. Assault your ears as the airlock hisses open. The room is bathed in the eerie crimson of the battle station lights. Somebody's gone, gone crazy with the Phillips Hue. You strike the override panel and silence descends suddenly. As you look around, signs of fierce combat become apparent. Small dark spheres float past and smear them. <laughs> Small dark spheres float past and smear themselves on the stained walls. Do I want to know what these small dark spheres are a body rises from the floor seemingly translucent in the red glow as it flails around it's like we're watching the expanse here uh it, is that the symbol for mars back there uh glowing globules oh they're globules spiral away from the figure's arm disappearing as they reach the wall Why aren't there six fingers on that <laughs> door? <laughs> Look. Uh, it screams and passes through the left wall. Silas descends again. Look a little bit like Doc Brown to me. Marty! <laughs> Only to be 
only to be punctuated by the rumble of ship's weapons ship's weapons firing. The ship lurches, slamming you against these slick walls. This is quite the derelict ship. Sure is hit. Michael is hit. Nikki is hit. Ouch. And we can't heal. No, but the reason I wanted to go back to town, I think I could have actually leveled up my character, some of my characters up again. I think so. I think I missed the ball on that. But let's just continue on anyway. Okay. The turret controls are deactivated. Your ship does not register on the scanners. You notice that you could just fit into the air shaft. <laughs> the party would have to travel in single file. The first or last person might have to fight alone. Do you enter? <laughs> sure. <laughs> A stenciled number indicates you are on deck two. Where do you go? Up, down, or stay? Let's go back down, man. I haven't explored this lower level. Let's see, the controls show that the engines have been shut down and the security program is in control. To restart requires access to the control room. So I guess we're looking for the control room. This is the engineering deck. The engines are silent. There's a ladder. You are at a ladder. Yeah, I don't want to leave little ECGS rush towards you. ECGS. A battle begins. Clinton made his zero G skill roll. Well, now we're fighting in zero G. Interesting. All right, well, I'm going to put everybody back on. Quick combat. He used his dazzle grenades to good effect. Poison? Oh man, one of those games. <laughs> oh, don't you just love poisons? Turn it up with those grenades, though. So he can come to somebody's aid already. I guess you can try to unpoison people. I guess if you don't make your zero G skill roll, you'll probably take a big penalty to your Thaco or AC or something. All right, don't waste all those grenades. Is treated. Well, some of them are blinded. Well, I guess that's one way to get rid of some inventory. A little bit like the alien, the, uh, I think the xenomorph. Man, I don't think I've killed one of these things. There's one down. Two down. Okay. Aid. So maybe I can just keep aiding them every time they get poisoned. That'd be cool. Just aid. Keep those grenades coming. I hope these uh, we don't blow a hole in the side of the ship. I guess we got spacesuits on though. So it says three of my, four of my guys, uh, five of my guys failed their zero G check. I guess you gotta do that every time. I'll tell you one thing though, it definitely has a different feel than Pool of Radiance. It's similar, but quite a bit different. It's a look and feel. Miss, 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 miss. We're gonna go through all our ammo just on these guys. Oh, 
Is that the, they have to do that zero G thing every round. All right. Well. So everybody with maybe everybody with first aid gets a crack at uh, treating wounds. Is that how that works? Got some defense robots arrive. One in zones. You are responsible for the destruction of RAM property and breaking isolation order. Termination is required. <laughs> Battle begins. Man, okay. No rest for us. Didn't even get the loot. How we can blind a robot? I hope this isn't too tough. My guys are kind of beat up. Four, four. Yeah. I think... You know, yeah. I'm actually feeling kind of confident about this, uh, the quick combat in this game. It seems to be relatively usable. I don't see him doing too uh, too many stupid things other than like wasting grenades, but maybe it wasn't a waste. Okay, I want give me the booty. <laughs> sure, his leg itches for a moment. Where's the booty? Ah! I didn't get the... I didn't get my stuff. Alright, let's explore a little bit more. I don't know how many hours I've been to this game already. You know, that's always a good sign to me when you... You literally don't know if you've been playing this for like an hour or two hours or three hours. Robots attack, chanting. Terminate! Terminate! Not to be confused with exterminate! Because that would be copyright infringement. <laughs> Alright, back to quick combat. Boom, boom, boom. Oh man, I just had a disturbing thought. What happens when I run out of, <laughs> out of ammo? <laughs> oh, I hope there's not that much to do on this ship. So I don't know if I can actually leave until we're done here. Miss, 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 miss. Like, you know, you get where you like that sound. Because that means your people hit. Oh, the team has found no booty. See, I thought it said before that I'd actually found some booty. Alright, what are we doing here? Is that a door? Nope. Robots attack! I might see if there's a way just to default to quick combat. It's a hell of a lot easier. Ooh, 10 damage? What the hell, robot? Nicky, this just took like one right to between the eyes or something. Martian laser rifle. Hey, they've got laser rifles. I want that laser rifle. Uh oh, is it gonna heal? Yeah, Nikki bandaged. I don't know, this might be a little tougher than I thought. We just keep missing every time and they don't seem to have that problem. We don't have that many hit points left. We just we could just connect every once in a while. <laughs> now it's starting to feel like pool of radiance. Come on. Probably got like two bullets left. Whew. No booty. And Michael's damaged still. You know, we might need to go back to base and like get some more ammo. I really don't like the idea of running out of ammo in here. Shearer notices a slowly spreading rash. <laughs> hey, what do you want me to do about it? I can't get inside there, it looks like. There's that shaft. Well, what to do? I guess we can go down. I said we need to get to the... Uh, 
command room, right? Uh, where was that shaft? Shearer gets a splitting headache. <laughs> Michael's leg is itching. Oh, this just gets better and better. Michael notices a slowly spreading rash. If it starts talking about you guys having trouble peeing, a burning sensation, uh, I'm out of here. All right. You notice that you could just fit into the air. <laughs> Speaking of, maybe that's how you got the rash. Uh, let's go up. I wonder how many, where do you think the command deck is? Probably at the very top. Let's just try this level first though. Oh, there's some. Oh, wait, what the hell? Yes, yes. This is. What? Huh? <laughs> Hor Hor horrid. Whoa! <laughs> Look at this thing. <laughs> uh, that's, some, that's some cool mustache tricks right there. Horrid Jinnies, Guineas, uh, slip into the. Air shaft from below. Andrew will have to face the dripping fangs alone. This probably isn't going to go too well for old Andrew. Ah, oh, man. So what's going to happen here? Is this... They're missing a lot. I think he's actually got a chance to survive in this. Probably not. It's not very fair. So what am I going to have to create a new character now? Uh, let's see what happens. Healing completed. The ECGs disappear into a conduit. I guess we're good to go. <laughs> no problem, I suppose. Let's see, where do you go? Stay. You know, I noticed that my. For some reason, my gold box companion is frozen up. Let me uh, restart that. I don't know why that happened. Okay, we're on deck three now. Oh, this is weird. It's only up there. The ship's oasis of beauty, the hydroponics garden, seems peaceful and untouched by the current events. Weaves rustle soothingly, and a sweet smell suffuses the room. The plants obscure your sight. The sounds and smell of this room begin to relax you. <laughs> Clinton remembers a quiet evening with an old girlfriend. The holding of hands, <laughs> the hugs and kisses. Andrew awakes from peaceful contemplation in time to see Clinton imprisoned in the vines of an unknown plant. This is Gardner's world gone horribly wrong. The small, the small thorns penetrate the armor. The vines pulse in time to Clinton's heartbeat. What do you do? Attack, flee, or watch? All right, I kind of tempted to put watch. We'll attack. In a frenzy, you fight off the pleasant lassitude and tear into the plant. Soon, vine remnants and ichor float through the air. The wounds from the plant begin to burn. <laughs> Clinton is hit for nine points of damage. Next to the uprooted plant is a broken containment field generator and a piece of paper. You take it and you record the paper as log book entry 50. Here we go again. <laughs> Yay. Where is the journal? All right, it was entry 50, was it not? Let's see, 50, 50, 50. You got a 50, 50. Paper found in life support. ECG non, non modal stage. Many mollusks begin life free swimming and eventually settle onto rocks. This has the advantage of containing ECG fertile forms to fixed locations. 
Experimenting with attractants, such as used by pitcher plants and Venus flytraps, there is no reason to suppose that the correct combination of scent and sonic clues could not be effective against hominid life. Dr. Alexander Williams. As seen on Gardner's World. But he is no Monty Dunn. Congrats! The team gets experience. <laughs> Yeah, you got an experience, all right. Uh, a splitting headache. Okay, well that was fun. Guess we should save. There's another room. Let's... Shearer suddenly just Shearer suddenly keels over. All right. <laughs> Is that it? For sure, comatose. And there's nothing we can do. View gear skills. Yeah, you sure think there would be a some kind of potions or warp tin's leg itches for a moment. This room contains the air sampling equipment for the ship. Okay, I guess, I guess that's just informative. Where do you think the command deck is? Let's go in here. Nope. A whole lot of nothing, because you know in a spaceship you got a lot of just empty rooms. <laughs> Big empty rooms. <laughs> okay, you've reached the life support deck. You can faintly hear the thrum of cycling hydroponics tanks. Now well, we probably don't need life support. Let's go up again. Okay. Cargo deck. Cargo deck? So the high that doesn't make sense. It must be a level above this. Let's try one more time going. No, oh, this is the top. Well, let's go down. Down, down. Okay, we're on deck one now. Wait, that's where we started off. <laughs> uh, where? Okay, deck two. Okay, we haven't been on deck two. This must be it. Save. Is there anything? I'm looking at something there. Just decoration. Nikki's egg. <laughs> Nikki's egg. <laughs> yes, if your egg is itching, you really got trouble. No, it's your leg itching for a moment. Nikki, have a nice scratch. I guess we didn't bring any. What is that? Calamine lotion they put on itchy legs? <laughs> Aloe vera? Oh, we don't want to go in that air shaft, do we? Okay, there's something here. Look. What? What is that? The airlock is sealed. The exterior damage warning is flashing. The outer hatch looks sheared off. Your ship is nowhere to be seen. Oh, that's just great. Your eyes rivet on a body floating in front of the door. Its missing arm marks it as identical to the spectral figure in the corridor. He is shrouded in the tattered and darkly stained remains of a lab coat. Bad day at the office. <laughs> Floating near the corpse is a log recorder, oh, that's convenient, and a holographic projector. Even more convenient. You play back the log and the room is filled with a rather bored voice. We will be on schedule for deployment after Earth sterilization. Earth sterilization. If holes are fine, is core. Wait a minute. Power fluctuations. Disruption of primary containment fields. All batches showing increase in activity. Scott! Not great Scott, just Scott. Scott! Emergency shutdown now. Or maybe Scott's the person <laughs> in engineering. <laughs> what are the odds? Uh, where are you, Scott? 
Scott is non-functional. Security is notified. Setting up a holographic warning to any who come on board. Poor Scott. He's he's non-functional. Hope it's just a precaution. You know, Data was fully functional. I, I remember that from the show. Uh, projector coming online. Wait. So quickly? The gleaming eyes. No. Get back. Ah! Ah! And that's what you pay for, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the room echoes with the last scream. Beyond the, body, beyond the body are many large open cylinders. Are these beer cans? That's all. Well, they're open, so I guess it wouldn't matter. You take the log and you record it as log book entry 38. How about that? Once again, we are back. Dr. Williams Law. First entry. Dr. Alexander William, Sigma number A95151 in Earth orbit. Four batches of ECGs on board for final test. What the hell is this ECG? I guess those are those alien creatures? Security, security informs me that their precious phase one project is on schedule, but not by much. I should have plenty of time to perfect my creations. Yeah, I think this is kind of a mad scientist type, right? Holzerzheim has promised me a percentage of the profits associated with the ECG harvest on the sterilized Earth. Finally, there is hope that proper funding for the biological sciences can be achieved. <laughs> Second entry. Progress on ECGs on schedule. Batch 1 shows high adaptability. Batch 2 has survival rates above 90%. We will be on schedule for deployment after Earth's sterilization. If Hoser's Iron is cut. Wait, this sounds familiar. Tape ends. Wait. Am I having deja vu? Am I just completely lost my mind? That looks familiar. <laughs> Pretty sure. That was in the game. Uh, okay. I think these, uh, I think that little visit to the botanical garden or whatever they call that it's getting to me my leg is starting to itch <laughs> literally my egg is my egg and my leg are itchy okay i'm gonna save it and i'm gonna grab some lunch and i will be back later all right back to it and as i was snacking on some chips I was reading a user guide, or oh, that, that fact I referred you to. It was, it's written for the sake of Genesis, but uh, I guess the same stuff applies. And anyway, they, <laughs> they said that you better get your butt to the medic, medical station, once you contract this disease, because your guys will just one by one get go into comas. And the only way to fix that, apparently, is to get to this medical bay. So let's do that. Let's find the medical uh, facility. Yeah, there goes Michael. Before everybody <laughs> kills over, and I, I believe it is on deck four. Let's see up one more time. There's deck four. And let's see. I'm going to... Uh, Let's see. It's the cargo bay. Where is the medical bay? Yeah, it's <laughs> not there. Where is it? Okay. Now this is just a big open room. Where is that medical bay? Oh no. 
What am I supposed to do here? <laughs> well, we're fighting our own now. Shearer has gone insane, Captain. I think he enjoyed that. Are these guys dead? No, they're comatose. We have got to find this medical bay. God, where is it? In here, maybe? Maintenance tools. A set of cargo boxes strapped together to form a well-hidden living area. Pillows, paper, and women's clothing float at random in the space. The papers are a rough diary. One is crudely sc scrawled. The rash is spreading. I have little time. Oh no. wonder where the rash came from. Uh, you take them and you record them as logbook entry 21. Oh, Dr. Donna Conchitez's diary. Day number one, Dr. Williams sounded the security alert. This can only mean that his guineas have escaped. Scott is offline. <coughs> Need his help if I'm going to counter these beasts. Don't believe the security can hand handle the creatures. Williams has kept them too much in the dark. Holding in cargo bay and filling room with perfume to hide my scent. Huh. Clever. I will observe and record. Day number two, ship is silent. I've spotted two battery battle sites. We lost them both. Thankfully, I haven't been discovered. It seems that they have taken over the control room. They may be preparing to molt into stage three form. I hope not. Dr. Williams boasted that stage three was a hyper-intelligent mode. These might be able to figure out the controls and trace me and donate to MatChat via Patreon. I have found some of William's notes. <clears throat> he engineered the ECGs to be susceptible to some harmless material. Unluckily, Scott is still offline. Need him to access William's private files. Day number three. Stung by something today. Got an itch on the left leg. Checking William's files to see if it's anything serious. God, I hope not. I found it. Oh no, the rash is spreading. I have little time. Oh, you know, this is not a bad story, really. It's, it's really not. It's, it's kind of like uh, Alien. You know, the movie Alien is probably an inspiration. Probab oh. Probably the inspiration for this. Sorry, Michael. I might have to look at the map to figure out where the hell this medical station is. I thought I might just be able to stumble into it. But let's see. There's another ladder. Yeah, where in the heck is this medical bay? All right. I'm going to have to look at the walkthrough. Or I guess I could look at the clue book. <clears throat> Oops. Um, spy ship. Uh, level four. This is the medical lab. This is the sick bay. Oh, I have to have some kind of codes first. <laughs> Just, oh, man. Oh. Air shaft and gear. Location. I'm trying to see if there's anything I can do if I'm screwed. Ladder up, RAM security. Do I have this voice print yet? <clears throat> Dr. Williams. Protective salve. So 22, 23. That's actually on level 6, sick bay. Ladder down, containing folder. Door 
self-destruct mechanism. Thirty-four. Well, level nine. <laughs> but I'm not gonna get. I'm not gonna finish this today. That's for sure. Uh, so what? Level six is the sig bay. Well, let me let me hold on. All right. So apparently that guy making the walkthrough, he is working with that Sega Genesis version, and apparently quite different than the PC version. So we've got to use our clue book and not that walkthrough. But I think the medical bay that we need is, let's see, level six. Hmm, let's see, 24, biomonitor station, 22 is a medical lab. 93, the sick bay. I'm trying to commit this to memory. That never works. Okay. Sick bay. 22. The medical lab is pristine. A small data computer is attached to a table. Use it. A voice emanates from the computer. This unit will operate only with valid voice print. What do you do? Take or ignore? <clears throat> I guess take? You scoop up the computer and find some poison antidotes. Okay, well, by all means, use those. He's okay. Let's see, better give him one. <clears throat> give Michael one. Who else was having issues? Give the rest of the medic, I suppose. Okay. Now let's. Oh, Jesus! <laughs> Give me a freaking turn here. Uh, okay. View. Gear. Now let's see. Tr you. How do I use it? Trade. Join. Skills. How do I? Oh, this is driving me batty. Like, how do you use items? Crying out loud. Uh, gear. I can ready it. How do I? Trade, drop, have, join. Man, I don't even know how. How do you apply a potion into this damn game? Uh, Got to be some way to do it, right? View, look, change. No. Look, view. You think there would be like a use button? Okay, Jesus, let me look this up again. This is I'm gonna ding at a point for this just incomprehensible interface. You know, I dug all around in this manual, and as far as I can tell, there's just no way other than after combat to use a poison antidote. Okay. Counter into I don't even know if that's counterintuitive anymore, just lazy coding. I mean <laughs> poor implementation. Alright, let's see. We are in the medical uh sick bay. Spot twenty two twenty three is the sick bay. So that should be this <clears throat> the sick bay is a highly advanced one a number of automated surgeons dangle above pristine white tables and in the corner an autopsy was performed the corpse is carefully laid out clearly labeled bottles are racked nearby 
a personal log, and a carefully folded uniform marked Dr. Conchitez, Conchitez, float next, next to the unclothed body. You take the log and you record it as log book entry 20H. And what do you say? Sun, no, log of Donna Conchitez. And it made it, I think I pronounced it about seven different ways at this point. Uh, made it up to sick bay. Headache has already started. Trying stimulants to keep conscious. Activated medical scanners. Time passes. Oh, is this an audio log, I guess? Uh, the parasite has buried itself deeply in the brain. Still awake, but room beginning to spin and color cycle. Scanner information is still inconclusive. Time passes. The room is twisting, shadows crawling everywhere, the scanner is laughing. You know, I think we've all had days like that. Only one thing left. Surgeon! Full invasive scan of biological subject. Mechanical voice. Option contraindicated. Sigma override required. Voice near hysteria. Override number A10, A10151, initiate! The hum of machinery and suck of vacuum pumps are all that can be heard. A protein formula is printed out. The information allows you to produce a protective protein salve if you can extract a brain parasite. You want to use the automated surgeon to remove the brain parasite. Yes? Who <laughs> will be operated on? <laughs> Well, let's see. If you don't want to be operated on, if you... Let's do it this way. If you want to be operated on, just lie there and don't raise your hand. Sure. Thank you for volunteering. You activate the surgeon. A mechanical hum and the hiss of pumps fills the room. A mechanical voice in tones, Sigma number, subject not covered by RAM insurance. Uh, what do you do? Turn it off, reprogram it, or speak to it? I don't know, speak. What number do you say? I don't, I don't know, number? I don't know. Invalid Sigma number, security alert, the laser scalpel swivels and attacks. Other surgeons begin to power up. What do you do? You leave in a hail of laser fire. Oh, I think we just got ourselves into an unwinnable state right there. Yeah. I guess if you don't have the code, you should just not talk to the robot. Uh, they're probably going to kill us. They might possibly survive this. This is back in the day where even with a clue book you were doing good to figure out what the hell you're supposed to do. I mean, how was I supposed to know I needed a code before I talked to that computer? Alright, let it end. Okay, load. Oh man, I think this is quite a ways back too. Did I? Where am I? I'll reset my eh. Well, at least I know better where I need to go now. So I guess I need a code to be able to Where do I get the code? book again. That's it. Does it tell me where the code is? Commander Vilikov. I mean, that gives you me the answer, but I mean, I don't want to just look it up. Where do you get this code from? Um, Dr. Williams. 
Was the code in this journal article? I just blanked out. I have little time. Log. Oh, look. It is there. <laughs> Override number A10151. Okay. All right, so that's my bad. I should have uh, looked at that a little more closely. Okay, I'm just going to write it down. A10151. Okay, I'll take back what I said about your game. All right, we're on deck five now, correct? <laughs> this is deck five. <laughs> Man, I am completely out of deck five. No, we need to get to deck six. Ugh. Up. Okay, now we're at deck six. Yeah, hurry, hurry. Okay, medical lab. Use it. Take it. I'll give one to <clears throat> one other person, I guess. Ah, I gotta fight Shearer again. <laughs> you get XP if you kill your own people. That might be a way to get some XP. Oh shoot, I got the screen covered up. Boop. Sorry about that. Sure, you gotta die again, my friend. Maybe I'll take <laughs> take out Andrew and Michael. <laughs> I think he really missed, or was he just being nice? Okay, now we should be good to go. Matter of fact, I'm gonna go ahead and save it so I don't have to re-kill Shearer yet again. <laughs> All right, surgeons, yes, yes, corpse, yeah, we're not gonna do the thing. Oh, you know, I guess if you didn't have the, the, the journal though, you'd just be screwed. Almost as if by design. <laughs> yes. Uh, let's do... Uh, yeah, speak. All right. A10151. Registered death certificate, invalid Sigma number, security alert. Huh? Did I not write that down right? <laughs> wow, they just kind of really overdid it with this. No, that's not the same number. Okay, well, what's... <sighs> Where is the number I need, then? Let's see, day one, that is help. The rash is spreading. I remember reading this, but there's no numbers in that. Where's the... Okay, I guess I... Huh. Well, I guess I was, uh, I see another code there. Let's go back to the clue book. Uh, oops. All right, so it appears I need to get to level seven to get this code. Ugh. Is there any way to end this? Yeah, we still got some of our people. Maybe we can survive. So I got to get to level seven. Get the damn code. Come back. 
You know, I don't know. Actually, I'm going to have to reload because even if I survive this, the surgeons will be uh, inoperative. So hang on, I'm just going to have to re reload. What a pain. Okay, reload. All right, so <laughs> what do I need to do? Get to level... Where the hell am I? Uh, okay, deck seven. And from here, I need to go. Let's see. Stay. 25. To the light. Okay. Um, you find a... The room looks quickly ransacked. Clothing and personal effects float everywhere. You find a diary and you record it as logbook entry 17. I bet you that... I bet that is where we will find what we need. Let's see. 17 is... Book found under pillow. We have boarded the spy ship and are en route to Earth. If the ECG phase of the project is successful, <laughs> I think I'm getting a rash. Uh, uh, my career with Ram is set. Dr. Williams is very confident, and we have several batches of stage one and two ECGs in containment fields. I wish that Dr. Williams was more forthcoming about his recent modifications. That bastard is <laughs> not a nice guy. He has refused to discuss a newly added ability, nor will he mention what control substances he will use after their release on Earth. Captain Vilnikov is a buffoon who keeps making moves on me. Uh, Dr. Williams is, a, is as cold a fish as ever, as the security team are as pleasant as a batch of hyperscorps. Only Scott has a decent personality. Do I believe that they scanned in too much poetry? <laughs> Science is excellent, but he continually rhapsodizes about Earth and its native ecosystem. I can't understand why he sees in that chaotic junk heap. When we're done, we'll have a much more ordered world. G uh, guineas or Jennies, I don't know. Far superior to evolution's random gene selection. Well, unfortunately, that did not give me the code I need. That's yeah, not good. So, back to the old <laughs> clue book. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. Well, let's see. Blenick Vilenkoff's room. It's just right across the hall. Let's try that. This room is filled with bodies. Only one is human. Clasps, clasped in his hands are a drained laser pistol and a personal log. You take the log and you record it as logbook entry 60. Okay, back to the logbook. <laughs> Welcome to 1990. Uh, was that 60? No, wrong book. Da, da. Captain Vilnikov's, Vilnikov's law. Sealed until my death under Sigma. Ah, there we go. There we go. Sigma code A22151. As undercover security officer and pilot. I don't know if you can see this actually. I don't have it positioned right. Let me do this instead. There you go. <clears throat> I have engaged Dr. Williams in a number of private conversations. A simple transcript follows. Oh, this is quite extensive here. Have a seat and strap in, Doctor. I talk much better when we're both the same side up. Oh, zero gravity. Yeah. What makes these jennies of yours so impressive? Williams, let me counter that with a question of my own. What would you do if we were suddenly under attack by Neo? I'd scan the ships and see what I was up against. Then I'd fight or flee, depending on the odds. It's what any captain would do. That's exactly why I designed the ECG. 
They molt from form to form so that you never know exactly what you're up against. Four stages, each with its own specialties. This makes evaluation difficult. Defenses against one can prove worthless against another. So we'll create the perfect threat. Why shouldn't Ram be terrified of the prospect? What makes them profitable instead of a danger? <laughs> that is what I'm working on now. I am modifying their structure to be susceptible to certain harmless chemicals. At the same time, we must keep the specifics very classified. Okay, so alien super weapon with a secret weakness. Okay, tape in. So we have the code now. <laughs> Question. Can I make it back to that lamp? Okay, save add, don't quit, move. <laughs> oh, but I don't run into anything. All right, down. Was it deck six I need, right? Yeah, it's in here. Man, my heart's beating fast. <laughs> Am I going to be able to do this? We're going to get the code wrong. Okay, there's a corpse. Yep, yep, yep. Very nice, very, very nice. Yes. Let's do sure. Okay. I really should have saved it before I came in here. <laughs> You'll never learn, Matt. One, five, one. Enter. <sighs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> the operation is quick and successful. The others undergo the procedure and are, and are cu cured. Congrats, something happened. Do you want to heal the party? Yes. Ah, oh, that's so good. <laughs> yes. Okay, so we got that little business taken care of. Uh, I guess we should try to figure out what the hell we're supposed to be doing here. Okay, so I think what we need... Park that off the side there is get to level nine. No, but I don't think our stairs go up that high. And, oh, well, I guess we can go up once. All right, this is deck seven, which is the cruise deck. So there must be a, another stairway here somewhere. Let's see, yeah. I think it's there, up. All right, this is the security deck. We go up one more time. Now we're on deck nine. And there's a computer in here. We, no, 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 go up. Stay. Stay. <laughs> okay, 33. The computer is in a room. No, don't go into the air shaft. That's it. This console is a very advanced computer system, probably RAM's best. The connections to the next console are strangely fused. I can't do anything. A hologram forms before you and speaks. I'm so glad you made it. This is the only place where I can communicate. Oh, I'm sorry. I am forgetting formalities. I am Scott Doss. Scott Dot Doss. <laughs> Digital personality. He continues and you record the monologue as logbook entry 54. Man, there's a lot of log. I don't remember having to go to the logbook this many times playing those other games. Somebody must have been really uh, something of a rider. 
Let's see, I was trapped in this console by the security program, which ruthlessly fused all my connections. I've been isolated since then. I'm glad that my attack attracted Neo forces. You will find a set of new and deadly guineas, Jennies, ECGs, and cold storage on deck two. Ram also has a plan to sterilize the Earth. In case you hadn't realized, I am defecting to Neo. I spent much time evaluating Earth for Dr. Williams. I have become enamored of such a diverse ecosystem and has survived in the face of great adversity and changes. Everything humanity has done up to now has only slightly injured the planet's life-giving capabilities. Now Ram has the capability to deal Earth a mortal blow. They will then deposit the ECGs on its carcass and remake the world. I can no longer allow this. That is why I have changed sides. When he winds down, you bring him up to date. Informed of the condition, he informed of the ship's condition, he gasps, "Oh dear! I had wanted to stop the crew, not get them torn apart. Go to the next console and collect and connect the two red wires to this panel. Then I can help." Okay. Scott appears again. Ah, much better. Just a moment while I scan the ship and make an evaluation. Okay, the ECGs have barricaded themselves in the Deck 10 control room. Some are molting to Stage 3. Dr. Williams referred to it as a hyper-intelligent stage. This concerns me. Yes, me too. Oh, I skipped a bit. Uh, I'm sorry. Let's see. Let's scan those bio-records you have from the med lab. These data suggest that ECGs have been made susceptible to argon gas. Any on board would be on Deck 4 or 0... Feed it into the air pumps. I will be in contact with you as needed. Good day. All right, deck zero. I think that's where we started, right? Okay, this is where the, this is where this auto mapper thing just pays for itself. Okay, gotta go a long way down. Here's deck seven. Uh, let's see, back down. Yes, down. 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 Stay, what deck are we on now? Oh man, didn't even tell me. Scott speaks. Some of the stage threes have emerged, they are weak. Down. <laughs> oh no! Uh, ha! Down. 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 Okay, you gotta go one more down. Down. Okay, somewhere here is the. Yep, there we go. After an exhaustive search, you locate a pair of argon tanks and strap them to your back. Scott says, head up to deck three. I'm oh, making pretty good progress now. It's amazing how much better you do with the clue book. <laughs> okay, back up to deck three. Now, I guess it makes sense that you have to like walk out and walk up and go to another ladder. And yeah, they don't want you falling too far in zero G. Okay, up. Here's deck three. What am I supposed to do on deck three? Uh, when in doubt, whip it out. Deck three. Life support. Okay. Oh, this is where we had our fun in the hydroponics. <laughs> Uh, 12. We already got them. Okay, 14. We need to get to section 14. Right, let me park you over there. Um, a stage 3 is moving about, examining the controls. Oh, here we go. Should 
shouldn't be so hard now that we got the what the hell is that thing <laughs> it's like a giant cockroach like a scorpion tail man Glad these things are still weak. One point, put everybody back on quick. There's not really that many things I could do anyway. Oh, come on. Smush that roach. No poison. No. Seven. Eight. Man, that thing must have a lot of health. Got it. Use antidote on Shearer. I guess. Healing completed. Team has found no booty. I'll save it anyway. That seemed like a pretty big victory to me. Man, that was just one. I don't know if I'd want to fight three of those things. Okay. This room contains the air sampling equipment for the ship. It could be modified to introduce argon throughout the ship. The argon canisters connect. With a twist, the valve is open and argon hisses into the air system. Congrats. <laughs> it's working. The guys in the control room are starting to writhe and collapse. The stage threes are also affected. Hold it. One of the stage threes is manipulating the controls. It's reversed the flow. The ECGs are beginning to revive. Quickly head down to engineering. The panels there will override the airflow. Oh, geez. Uh, down to engineering. I assume that literally means down. Is that all the way back down to zero again? No, it's level one. Okay. And back we go. Getting a lot of use out of these. Uh, getting a lot of use out of these rooms. Huh? Yeah, quick, 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 quick. You know, sucky part of this is I'm pretty sure I could have leveled up again before I came here. Now I gotta wait until we get all the way back to be able to train. When you're playing tabletop D and D, this is what you wish everybody else's turn was like. <laughs> I'm gonna climb up on the wall and turn into a gorilla and come up with a clever way to kill the creature. Okay, exit, save it. Oh, where are we? <laughs> what was I doing? <laughs> I need to get to level one. Yep, down, deck two, deck one. Okay, where do you think I need to go in here? All right, the override can be canceled here. Who will repair? Repair. Uh, which one's my engineer? Rocket Jack. Nikki. As you examine the unfamiliar circuitry, Scott speaks. Let me explain the procedure. Nikki begins to follow his instructions. With the Argon halted, the creatures are free. They have detected your tampering, and large numbers are rushing towards you. You can make a stand here or abandon the deck to the ECGs. Golly, I don't know. <laughs> stand? <laughs> uh, the Jenny skitter forward. Nikki is still trying to override the controls. The horde of ECGs leap forward, eyes glittering in anticipation. Nikki twists the last connection. The ECGs slam into you, but they are already collapsing. <laughs> they rise in the air and then are still. Yeah, this is some good stuff. Man, they have really done a good job. I mean, they really thought about this engine and the way that 
This, these stories are told. I mean, this is, this is good stuff. Uh, congratulations. The few ECGs left in the control room were writhing in their death throes. So much so that one kicked out my scanner. Still, my monitor showed lethal argon concentrations. Head up to control room and contact Neo. I remember that these things were phase two of some deadly threat to Earth. Okay, and I think we should be getting pretty close to done. I think what I wanted to get past this level, or get past this little quest before we call it a day. So let's see if we can do that. Okay, back up to level. What the hell? Destruct system armed and count. Those bastards. Ah, Self-destruct. One of the ECGs must have struck the control panels. Get the deck 10 immediately. Turn it up. Deck 2. <laughs> deck 3. Deck 4. Save. I wonder if they would literally not let you beat the game. 25. Yeah, maybe we should use this air shaft now. Deck five, deck six, deck seven, deck eight. No! Up! All right, 15. Save. Better save it as B this time, just in case we need to. No, don't go down. Oh boy, there's up. Ah. With the barricade unguarded, you rip it apart easily. You arrive at the panel and see the countdown proceeding. With a flurry, you type in an override sequence. The computer responds, destruct aborted. Thank you. Clinton is hit for damage. Okay. A spacesuited man is standing in the emergency airlock and firing at you. As you get closer, you see that the face is of no race you recognize. His expression is flat and its eyes dead black. You reach the strange Ginny. Okay, I guess we're getting a little fight here. What am I fighting? Let's see, I can target it. Stage 3 ECG. Oh, oh sure is down. Oh, man. Again, I don't really have anything else to do besides just shoot at it and hope for the best. Oh, goodness gracious. God, that guy's got a lot of attacks. I'm missing like every time. I'm probably have to reload this a hundred times. And doing a little bit of damage. Right. Ah, Michael's down. Oh, missing, missing, missing. I think that guy gets about four attacks. Come on, guys, you better hit him. Oh, geez, how many points does he have? Ah, I got him. <laughs> Man, I didn't think I was going to survive. Oh, and I got some booty, finally. Martian smart suit and a mono and a needle gun. Okay. There is something in the airlock. You look in and see a lone stage three setting a demo charge. Its soulless eyes peer at you intently. What do you do? Shoot it or flee? <laughs> Can I save? <laughs> Shoot it. As you hit it, it falls backward through the escape pod's airlock. The door closes and you hear the pod shoot away. Suddenly the ship shakes. The demo charge has gone off in the escape pod. Scott appears. 
Congratulations! I can find no ECGs at all on the ship. Let's contact Neo and figure out how Ram plans to sterilize the Earth. You pilot the ship back to salvation and give your report. You've done well. Yes, I have. I have assigned you to the ship to investigate this Ram plot. Here, Das examined the computer data and uncovered three vital facts. There's a secret Ram base near Ceres. Ceres in the Ceres? I don't know. <laughs> in the asteroid belt. <laughs> A Martian ram base, Gravitas Mon Grad Divas Mons, has been unusually active. Here, Das uncovered the coordinates of a manufacturing base in the Venusian, Venusian lowlands. According to Scott Das, the ship was scheduled to return to the asteroid base, so I recommend you start there. Where do you wish to go? <laughs> uh, okay. Um, First thing I want to do is level my guys up again. Now that I'm starting to get a better idea. Let's just save it here first, though. I want to get one look at this ship before we go. Uh, but I can't help it. I have to train. So I wonder if it'd make... Can I do the same weapon again? I don't know. What do we... We have laser pistols. Didn't I just get, like, something something else? Uh, see, I have to make a decision here before I really know what the hell I'm doing. Can't escape out of it. Eh, let's try a laser rifle. I don't know. Okay, then we can do this again. Yeah, so I definitely want more points. In oh, wait, this is maneuver. Well, that's what I want, right? I think. <laughs> Leadership. I don't know. That didn't turn out to be too useful. Battle tactics was a good. I guess jetpack. Pair weapon. Man, I got a bunch of points. Here's our technical skills. Jury rig. First aid. Repair nuclear something. Okay. Done. Uh, let's see. Begin adventure. Train. Yeah, so maybe I was wrong about that. I thought they may have uh, had another level coming up. I need to go to the clinic and get these guys patched up. Do, do, do. Everybody's healed up. Nice. Uh, okay, I just want to jump into that ship and fly it around a little bit, I think. You know, I should level up all my characters, but, you know, we got to... Got to call it a day. Let's see. Launch, repair. Fuel it up. Gas it up. Ammo it up. <laughs> Restock it. Whatever. <laughs> launch. You are cleared for launch. Okay, so here's what I was trying to get to. Uh, so we actually get the sort of, you know, the, the Pool of Radiance games. You had the Overland map mode. And this one you actually have this, this, uh, Spaceship view. Oh, don't dock. <laughs> uh, oh, this is. I went. Did I go somewhere? Launch. Yeah, I guess I can't just go wherever I want. Landing. Okay, so I, you know I'd have to play around with a little, a little bit. Um, I was hoping I could just have like a random fight. Uh, I really want to see what the ship to ship combat looks like. Well, yeah, maybe I have to get a little bit further in the game first. Uh, so let me uh, pause it here. Let me train these guys up and we'll, I'll get, try to get far enough along so we can see the space combat. All right, so here we go. I wasn't as far as away, far away from the screen as I thought. 
it's just you have to uh, exit to be able to free flow. So let's see. We need to get to Ceres. And once again, to the trusty <laughs> clue book. <laughs> and let's see. So Ceres, right there. Sort of lower right quadrant. I think it's that blue dot. Boop. <laughs> oh, interesting. So I use the arrow keys to get around. Let's see. Sensors identify a Ram Scout cruiser on LR scanner. Hail, attack, or flee. I'm going to try to hail. What do you say? Bluff, intimidate, or ask for help? So I guess these are just bad guys. You challenged the ship. They weren't impressed. Okay, so I want to get a look at this, because this is like totally new just for the Buck Rogers games. They added this whole ship-to-ship uh, -ship combat mode, which I always, you know, I always think they should have done something like this. I mean, if you're going to go to this much trouble, they could have put this into the Gold Box game somehow, right? A, like a horse combat system, you know, I don't know, a siege uh, mechanic. <laughs> uh, but anyway, let's see how it works. So we've got Clinton here. He can. What do you want Clinton to do? Command sensors. Let's see. View the ship. Maelstrom Rider. Uh, view the character. He's got skills in. Probably a whole lot of nothing that's going to be useful here. Let's see. He's got, well, he's got com, Como operation and sensor operation about the same. Okay, let's see if we can command. Takes, oh, not as pilot! Ah! Oh, that's not what I wanted to do, but okay, we're stuck now. <laughs> Close? Maelstrom Rider is closing. Clinton is your pilot. What do you want Clinton to do? Quit? Can I put the other guy in charge? What do you want Sure to do? Sensors. Sure succeeds at sensor operation. Sensors. Michael is. I don't know. Sensors. Fails. <laughs> Warp 10. Is he our. Here's our rocket jack. Warp 10. Why don't I have the option to boost engines? Fails. Okay. Sensors. Andrew. The Martian Scout Cruiser is closing. Uh, fire. Target. I just fire without targeting? This is Clinton attacks with a K cannon and hits for 100 points of damage. All right. So it looks like we've got. I guess this is, is this us or them? I don't know. Maybe this is uh, us here. Let's hope. Beam laser destroyed on enemy ship. Wow. What does target do then? Hull, sensors, control, life support, fuel, engine, or weapons. Just anyway. Ten points of damage. Fire, fire. Oh, it's retreating. Martian Scout Cruiser fires missile mounts and hits for 40 points of damage. Warp 10 takes, oh, personally takes eight points of damage. Okay. The enemy jury rigs some systems. Oh, they got, they destroyed our cake cannon. Fire. Something failed. Fire. Just keep firing. 
Sensors destroyed. Command sensors target load. I guess I'll have him load the missiles. Enemy ship fires missile mounts and hits for 40 points of damage. Andrew leaps clear of an explosion. Van Allen, Van Allen fires beam lasers and misses. Clinton is your pilot. Retreating range five. Let's see if we can close in on it. Didn't seem to do anything. Missile. Ten points of damage. Does it got eighty-four points of damage? I don't think they're doing that much damage to us. Okay, let's see if we can. We're a little bit closer now. Let's see if we can get a little bit closer still. Board that sucker. Points. Boom, boom. Now I wonder what we have to do to board. Let's go ahead and have him load back. Jury rig. <laughs> Weapons, hull. Control, life support, engines. Looks like the engines are the lowest if I'm looking at this correctly. And succeeds. Okay, they hit us again. Man, they're destroying a lot of our systems. I really hope this is not us. <laughs> I think we got the engines. Here we go. 114 units of fuel plundered from enemy ship. All repairs completed. Each character receives 50 experience points. So there you go. Um, quite neat. Why are my engine... Oh, there we go. Orbiting Ceres, docking at spaceport. Now, so I think we've seen enough. Now, according to the manual, I haven't done this, but there's some way you can board the ship, and then of course it goes into that, you know, turn-based mode that you've seen, you know, seen in the other parts of the game. And you can actually, uh, I guess, capture it and bring it back and salvage it. So it's a pretty cool mechanic. Uh, but anyway, we're going to stop it here because I don't want to just go. Uh, we'll have one last drink, and then we'll. Uh, uh, call it a day. Okay, so what do I think about this game? Uh, I, I'm really impressed with it, actually. Uh, the storyline is really good. There's a lot of... Uh, they're really making good use, I think, of that journal of the of the engine itself. You know, they've, they've, they've tried to create as much tension and suspense as possible. Uh, I like the... You know, I love the film Alien, anyway. It's one of my favorite science fiction movies, and this, this kind of uh, reminds me of that. It's not nearly, I was a little bit worried, I guess, with Buck Rogers looking at some of that old footage. You know, they could have gone like a real cheesy direction, real campy and a silly sort of direction. Uh, they didn't do that, though. I mean, this this feels, again, more like a uh, alien or something more serious, even like, like a horror element to it. I really like that. You know, obviously, I haven't gone far enough in the game to know uh, how all this pans out or, you know, if it gets worse or whatever. Uh, but just this opening bit, you know, well worth looking into. Uh, I also really like the way that they customized or modified the gold box engine to fit this sci-fi setting. You know, it works really well. Uh, negatives, you know, the combat, you know, again, I'm just scratching the surface of it. I'm sure there's probably more advanced stuff you can do once you start getting into, like, grenades and grenade launchers and, you know, all that kind of thing. Um, but it does, at least at this point, you know, feel pretty basic. Uh, the combat feels pretty basic compared to uh, Pool of Radiance and those games where you have all those spells to work with. A lot of, feels a lot more tactical. You know, this, I was just uh, basically relying on quick combat, uh, which I would never do uh, in uh, those other games. Because, you know, basically you're just shooting and seeing if you hit or not. Uh, they could have maybe implemented a, a cover mechanic something like that would have made it a little bit more interesting needling you know basically do, do the whole XCOM thing uh, but just for what it is it's a 
you know, a pretty good, pretty good fun. Sorry, but I don't know why she's going so nuts over here. So, uh, so yeah, I would definitely seek this out. Uh, you know, if you like the gold box games, but you played them, kind of bored with it, this this feels different enough to where you get, you know, it's a nice change. Uh, and also, if you didn't like, if you don't like the fantasy settings because you're crazy, <laughs> or you just happen to prefer science fiction to fantasy, uh, you might want to try this. You know, because it's definitely a lot more, you know, obviously sci-fi here than, uh, than, than fantasy. Um, yeah, so that's about all I can think of to say, you know, audio visuals, you saw it for yourself. Uh, <laughs> you're not going to see a lot of uh, extensive cinematic cutscenes or anything like that. Uh, sound effects, pretty sparse. You know, they probably should have done more with uh, music and sound, but you know, it never really bothers me. Uh, I always feel like if I want to uh, play some music, I can always fire up something on my... <laughs> A computer here. <laughs> In fact, when I was playing Pool of Radiance, you know, I never even thought about, oh man, this doesn't have music. You know, I, I just play whatever I want. Uh, so I guess I'm just kind of weird that way. Um, but you know, it would probably wouldn't have hurt them to put at least a couple more scores on here. Uh, other than that, you know, I, I don't really know what else to say other than just, uh, you know, I would say go to GOG and get this game, but unfortunately, it's not available on GOG. You kind of have to go to some. Uh, questionable sources to try to find a working copy of this which which is a real shame so i don't know what to tell you exactly you know i don't want to like rattle off a bunch of uh, <laughs> you know abandoned wear sites or whatever uh, but you can look in the comments so if somebody does happen to know a fairly reliable place to source the game you know feel free to post that in the comments i'm not going to be responsible for that though if the youtube police come after you uh, you know you might want to just stick to your friend google uh, to find this, or if, if you got some friends uh, who happen to have it, even better. Uh, anyway, let's uh, call it here. Buck Rogers, Countdown to Doomsday. Uh, give us Definitely give this a thumbs up. It's a lot of fun. Uh, so check it out. And maybe uh, let Gog know you'd like to see this on Gog. And that's all for this week's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Go have some fun with Buck Rogers. But uh, before you do, uh, take a look in the, that, that show notes. Go to that Patreon site. Uh, there is a little thing that goes along with Matchet called Patreon. And it lets uh, you help me keep these shows in production. You know, it's 465, almost 500. I mean, come on, help me get there. <laughs> I can't do it. I will not do it without you. Uh, this is entirely a fun, a uh, uh, a fan-driven enterprise here at Mad Chat. So if you have uh, already supported the show, I thank you, thank you, thank you very, 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 very much. I, you know, just can't say <laughs> that enough. But if you've been putting it off, if you've been waiting for just that right moment, I think that moment is here. <laughs> so go to that link. It only takes a few minutes. And, you know, and by the way, you know, some people don't like the idea of a subscription, a monthly payment or whatever. Well, you don't have to do that. It's actually just a one-time uh, payment option there now. Uh, a lot of people prefer that. I think just about every every new person is basically going with that option because uh, you just you know do it once and forget about it. Uh, so some people like that. Uh, on the other hand, it's kind of cool to have you know a little trickle. You know, a buck a show is what I usually ask for, and you know and that adds up. You know, a lot of people think, well, you know, I don't have a lot of money for for Matt Chat or whatever. I'm kind of in, you know, not not doing so well. Well, you know, don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you're not going to offend me. Uh, certainly, actually, the opposite. I, I really appreciate, you know, those folks that are just doing the buck a show or you know whatever you can afford. You know, don't worry about it. You know, just know I appreciate your help with this. And that's sincere. Uh, so thank you so much for that. Uh, all right, what about the news from the Matt Cave? <sighs> All right, well, Jeff wrote in about this, Diablo II Resurrected. This is a review up on Ars Technica by one Sam Makovich, who, <laughs> I love this uh, little capsule review. Unholy cow, man. So this is a company that has, a, I should have written this down, it's like visual something or another. Uh, but anyway, they have gone in and done a lot more than the visuals. I mean, they've upgraded it to 3D graphics and done a marvelous job. 
a lot of advanced effects. You know, looks fantastic, but they managed to capture that feel. Uh, or the, you know, how to say this? So it's the, you know, the graphics have been updated, but the like the core experience or the spirit or whatever you want to call it, the main aesthetic has uh, been left intact. So it's just a really, you know, you could tell they really got it and were able to do a really good job on that. Now they've also updated the quality, some quality of life enhancements, controls, uh, the up uh, multiplayer experience, and a lot of other things. Uh, anyway, this isn't available quite yet, but you want to keep it on your radar if you're a Diablo 2 fan, obviously. <laughs> and uh, maybe I'll take a look at it when it comes out. You know, I, I really enjoy the Diablo series. You know, it's not, um, I didn't quite get into like the multiplayer stuff all that much back in the day, uh, but I certainly like the campaign. All right, and then Matt wrote in about this 42, the wildly improbable ideas of Douglas Adams. So a lot of you uh, quite rightfully are fans of Doug Adams, you know, great science fiction author, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, of course. <laughs> he also did some fun uh, travel documentaries. You know, a lot of people don't know about those. I think it's like Last Chance to See is uh, one of those. Uh, but anyway, this is a book uh, celebrating him, basically. It's a large format hardback featuring never before seen extracts from Douglas's extraordinary archive. So this is a Kickstarter there. 11 days to go as of this recording. They were looking to raise $89,000, but have already raised $324,000. So you know, they must be great. You know, it's good to know that there's people out there that appreciate uh, Doug Adams. I mean, he's such a great author. I've read the uh, <coughs> that Hitchhiker's Guide. I probably read that about four times. And, you know, I love the. Uh, the television shows, even the movie wasn't as bad. <laughs> I kind of went into that movie thinking, hmm, I don't know about this, but you know, even that turned out really, really well, I thought. Uh, let's see what else we've got here. Uh, Charlie Hall has an article up on Polygon about this new Fallout tabletop RPG. I was uh, reading about this, and it's kind of an interesting history because, you know, they, uh, you know, Tim Kaine and company, they wanted to release, uh, the original Fallout game was gonna be based on GURPS role-playing system. I don't know if you remember that little detail, but, uh, you know, they ended up making their own thing. Uh, so now it's kind of come full circle. So now they're taking the Fallout system and bringing it back to the tabletop. This is a company called Modifus, or Modifi, Modifius Entertainment. There we go. Uh, and apparently they've done quite a job on this. Um, it's kind of interesting work they're doing with the D20 system. They're trying to accommodate that, uh, you know, the minutia of that Fallout system but make it a little bit uh, more flexible, I suppose. You have more role-playing opportunities in there. You don't get too hung up on, like, <laughs> you know, lines of sight uh, with your miniatures and everything. And they've also put some new classes and some ideas about role-playing in there, like the Mr. Handy class. So if you play as uh, that class, you've got limited limbs, uh, but also you have to think about what your character knows. So you can only say things that fit the programming <laughs> of Mr. Uh, of your Mr. Handy. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, should be fun. Uh, and then finally, uh, Pongo uh, wrote in about this game, Harold Halibut. It's a handmade narrative game about friendship and life on a city-sized spaceship submerged in an alien ocean. But the gimmick is it's made entirely with claymation. Welded metal, textiles sewn against tiny wooden floorboards, and clay faces the size of walnuts immerse the player in Harold's tactile world. So it looks fantastic. <laughs> we don't know what uh, too much more about it at this point, but certainly go check that out. We'll uh, I'll keep you updated on that. <laughs> All right. Um, I got a bit of a surprise for you guys. You know, it's been a long time since we've done the Ale of the Week. And... Uh, I've kind of gone overboard with this because I've actually brewed my own, <laughs> actually brewed my own ale. I'm kind of excited about this. I uh, ordered a kit uh, for Northern Brewery. Uh, Northern Brewer, I believe they're actually here in Minnesota somewhere. Uh, not 100% sure on that, but uh, anyway, I got the recipe for one called Fresh Squished. It's an IPA. Uh, so I followed the recipe, it took about uh, four weeks total, you know, by the time you brew it. You know, add the hops and all this <laughs> stuff. I'll see if I can put the uh, recipe there for you so you can see what kind of uh, hops and uh, grains and uh, malts and all that good stuff is in there. Uh, then you got to bottle it. 
<laughs> and I didn't know this. I mean, I learned so much about uh, beer just from brewing my own. I mean, it's amazing uh, the stuff that goes into this this beverage. But uh, you know, even after you put it in, in the bottle, you're not done. <laughs> you got to wait another two weeks, uh, I guess, for the sh the yeast left in there to eat the sugar and produce uh, some CO2, so you get fizzy beer. You know, actually, when you're done making your beer, it's not fizzy. It's not not really beer. It's just kind of like a mold beverage. I don't know what to call it. <laughs> uh, so basically, you got to be patient with this. Uh, definitely takes a t uh, some time to make. Uh, anyway, let's get this open. I'm a little bit nervous about this. I opened up one uh, the other day and it just gushed out like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> they call that the, a gusher. Uh, so I apparently still have quite a bit of learning left to do uh, just in terms of uh, you know, bottling it. Actually, I'm not going to bottle anymore. You know, I did this process once, <laughs> then I'm like, got to be a better way. Uh, so I'm looking into uh, some of the other options out there. But anyway, now let's get this fresh squished open and <laughs> see what it's all about. I'm going to, uh, you guys might, it might delight in it if it does gush. So let me just open it for you. Hopefully that will not happen though. Not worth it. <laughs> okay. It was not a gusher. So I'm very happy about that. Let me, uh, I'll pour a little bit here in this Aussie uh, glass just so you can see the color on this. But then I'll put it into the drinking horn, of course, a proper, a proper uh, container. Ah, so this smells amazing. You really smell, I think it's got maybe like uh, four different kinds of hops in here. It's about six ounces and some of those are dry hopped which means you actually uh, put those in later, uh, about a week before you're, you know, you're ready to bottle. And so yeah, very citrusy aroma on this. You know, it just smells uh, really hoppy and citrusy and uh, sweet. Let's get a little bit here in the uh, drinking horn. And it looks like the foam worked out pretty well too. You know, I probably should wash this out. It's been sitting here for a while, unused, unloved. <laughs> it takes some time to brew. Okay, that should be good. All right, I wanted to do a little toast here. Some some of the new uh, folks at Matchet. So again, thank you very much to everybody who's on Patreon. But most recently, Warp Ten, John, Andrew, Nikki, Michael, Clinton, <clears throat> Benjamin, First Kiss Feeling. Interesting. And Paz XZ. Paz XZ. So we'll do a little toast to you. Uh, thanks everybody for that. Man, can I even remember how to drink out of this thing? <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, that is good. <laughs> Man, I think it actually likes this horn better. I mean, it's, it's nice and foamy here in the horn. And there's hardly any head over there, but man, you put pour it in this, and I think it really appreciates the horn. Mm. Man, that tastes even better than it smells. I mean, good God. <laughs> I'm just amazed at how good this is. I'm going to try it. I got to try it one more time. Oh, man, just super, super good. I don't know if that's just because it's uh, my phenomenal skills as a brewer, I, don't, I doubt. <laughs> uh, probably like the freshness factor, maybe. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the hops are just really, uh, I mean, that's the main thing I notice is just the, you know, that, that character, I guess, of these hops uh, and the aroma is really pungent, really potent, uh, more so than I have. Uh, I think it's probably safe to say uh, something about the hops in this stands out more since it's a fresh brood. <laughs> so, uh, maybe that's a factor here, but yeah, really, really delicious. Uh, you know, I, I don't know how I feel about rating my own <laughs> uh, creation here. I mean, I did follow a recipe, so let's just say uh, I'll, I'll evaluate the recipe and say very, very nice. I mean, I was not very hopeful. <laughs> you know, I thought I might end up with kind of a middling beer, you know, for first time out, but wow. You know, I think I would put that up there with any of the other uh, IPAs I, I've tried. Uh, so, yeah, I, I don't know what your experience might be like, but if you've been thinking about maybe doing a little home brewing, 
uh, go to this Northern Brewer site, uh, get the kit. Uh, you know, if I can do it, you can do it. And you might, uh, uh, you know, I got to try this one more time. <laughs> you know, one thing I was wondering about too is, uh, you know, when you make these beers, you, you have to decide what water you want to use. Uh, some people use, uh, you know, tap water. Uh, some people use, uh, you know, spring water. They'll go buy water or get, get some from a spring. I just use the tap water. You know, St. Cloud here is known for having very tasty water. Um, so, you know, so maybe that's a factor too. Uh, but wow, I'm just, I'm, <laughs> I'm really pleased with this. Well, let me just put it that way. Really good. Uh, you know, I'll go five out of five just on the recipe. Uh, plus the experience. It was a lot of fun making this. So, so again, if it's something you've been toying with, I might, you know, do some more Matt chat. I'll, you know, going into a little bit more detail about the, the process behind this. You know, I don't know how interested you guys are in that. You know, I could give you like a full tour of, uh, <laughs> you know, like each step if you like. Uh, but anyway, uh, definitely check that out. Fresh squished, fresh squished uh, from Northern Brewery. All right, let's wrap it up with a quote. And I was looking for quotes about Buck Rogers. You know, the, you think there would be some great Buck Rogers quotes. Uh, I wasn't able to find any, uh, at least easily searching, but I did find a quote here from somebody about the comic strip. I think it's kind of interesting. And it kind of shows you the value of comics. You know, a lot of people uh, downplay comics, think of them as being for only for kids or whatever. So listen to this quote. My parents read the comics to me, and I fell in love with comic strips. I've collected them all my life. I have a complete collection of all the Buck Rogers Sunday Funnies and daily paper strips. I have all of Prince Valiant put away all of Tarzan, which appeared in the Sunday Funnies in 1932, right on up through high school. I've learned a lot from reading comics as a child. Now, can you guess who that is? Somebody who knows a few things about writing a good novel, a good story. Mr. Ray Bradbury. All right, hope you folks enjoyed that. See you next time. Uh, are you familiar with the uh, uh, rock? No. What are you doing? Let's go getting down. It's a little before your time. Frightened you.